Hello everybody, welcome to CPL Match of the Week. We're back. I'm Neblime. Here with me is State Zero. How are you doing, State Zero? I'm good. How are you? Good. I hear you've had a busy day. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Healthy habits while the, you know, the weather's getting good. It's it's nice to do. Starcraft's not the only thing. <laughs> you know? How dare you? But yes, yes, that's probably correct. Uh, so, we're still looking at some week two today. As you all know, regular season starting soon. You're all organized in your teams. Uh, now, it's only a matter of time till we start the real matches. Although, I shouldn't diminish the, the quote-unquote realness of this preseason, right? We've still got a lot of awesome matches to cast here. Now, we are doing week two today, but we will try and get through some more week one games as well. Especially if we have time today, there might be some secret bonus games from some very hyped players as well. So, uh, maybe. Hmm? I was going to say, maybe bonus games. <laughs> that is intriguing. Exactly. So, you'll have to wait and see. Uh, well, we can see the list of players there. So you know who you're, who you're going to see today. Let's get into that first game. Oh, the game sounds an odd. I'm curious. Uh oh. Hmm? You figure that out. No, no, no. It only takes one, literally one second to fix. In the <laughs> top right, in the blue, we have Ash Ball. And the bottom left, in the magenta, we have D Booties. We're starting you off with, you know, the Clash of the Gods, the PvP. Because, you know, I imagine Protoss consider themselves superior to every race, so when they fight, it's like they're looking down on the feeble Terran and Zerg fighting each other with their, you know, Stim and Dark Swarm, and it's like, no, no, this is, this is peak warfare right here. I didn't build detection, so there's literally nothing I can do. Peak warfare. I, I'm just saying, only one race is strong enough to attack you with their mind alone because they're so brainy. Right. Aren't ghosts meant to be psionic? Even though they don't really use that, do they? Yeah, no, they use the weakest gun. If they're so smart, they'd pick a better gun. <laughs> hey, psionic has nothing to do with smart now. Come on. That's, is that really related? <laughs> Um, they, I, yeah. I don't think so, anymore. It's, a, it's a game from 98, man. <laughs> yeah, you could just make that assumption back then. In the lore, they're supposed to be Sonic, right? But then what do they actually do? They have cloaking, which is technology. They launch a like, lockdown missile, which is technology. And they launch nukes, which is definitely technology. So I'm not really sure how the Sonic comes into it. Or why, for that matter. I mean, if you don't upgrade range, if they launch that nuke, they are killing themselves. I don't think they're that smart. I think they are <laughs> yeah, very dedicated. Sonic doesn't mean smart. I'm not saying anyone's smart out here, alright? By the same token, I'm not saying High Templar are smart. They're literally trying to hug the enemy. Although, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense, because they're like super enlightened or whatever, and they're like, why can't we all just get along? And then the Hydra Spines start hitting them, and they're like, oh right, okay, and then they, then they cast their storm. Uh, if you want to talk about super enlightened, one of these guys knows how good two gateway is. The other one going with the classic gateway getting the gas. So difference in bills. I'm excited to see it. A lot of clips, which we haven't mentioned, but we've seen it so many times. I think we don't even need to introduce it anymore. No, not not these players. Yeah, I, I obviously got sidetracked a bit there, but uh, no, I don't think I don't think we do honestly. Because uh, yeah, we've seen these players since like at Ball. least like CPL four and probably longer too. Ball. <laughs> Delayed mining of the gas, that could really hurt them when getting that first Dragoon out. And that one brave probe is going to try and do his best, the work of three, but uh, probably not going to be able to pull that off. DBD's hanging out, he looks like he wants a mana pile him, but there is a Zealot coming up from Ash Ball. Now, if you're going 10, 12 and sending Zealots, can you sort of distract the Zealot from killing the mana pile him? Is that how that works? I'm not particularly sure about any of that kind of stuff. Mana pylons or, you know, I, I'm not that kind of player. And There's a certain yeah. level of honor. Wow, so in other words, you're not even trying to win. That's why hey, I'm no, I, I, this. Still, I still <laughs> gas on this map against Terran, so I'm trying to win. So you do it to Terran, but not to Protoss. Wow, racist. I'm I'm not happy with that. It, it's StarCraft, yes. Yes, racist. <laughs> Everyone that complains about any sort of soggy of any kind, they're racist too. <laughs> well, maybe we could just all not do that, and that'd be alright. Oh, that pro. Oh, unfortunately, does not make it. I, I guess, yeah, again, well, I'm like that Templar. I'm like, why can't we all just get along? Yeah, you're right. Let's just all play tower defense. <laughs> I mean, sure, that'll work. Look, if everyone played Terran, I'm just saying, there would be no complaining about race imbalance. Uh... Okay, yeah, okay. We're gonna... We're gonna <laughs> just not... You can, you can go play Command Cocker anytime you want, man. Oh, like, no, if you want to play I'll with pass. only humans. I'll pass, I'll pass. 
Okay, so uh, we got the first lance coming across from Deep Booties here. Now, uh, he doesn't... He doesn't necessarily have to kill any enemy army, right? He's just going for probes if he can. Oh, look at this, this goon's already out, though. Oh, that might be a bad thing. Well, it's get, it's definitely going to buy some extra time for a ball to get some extra production, oh. possibly. But he's got to be careful. He's taking a lot of damage here. And you can see now he's going to be in that hard spot where Mike and these zealots can be a problem. We're going to pull a couple probes. He's got the zealot trying to block the ramp the best he can. Will this going to be able to do enough damage? Dibuz is going to keep trying to muscle through, though. Ball's got to be so careful. Oh, okay, that goon is really playing with his life. I mean, given he's already lost one life as a zealot, that's kind of that's kind of irresponsible. Um, okay, zealots do come up though, and honestly, I don't think you really can stop this. So they're gonna start trying to harass these probes. A great drill really denies their attacks for a minute there. One's still up. They keep going. Yeah, honestly, the worst part about this is with ball making the adaptations to try to defend against this. He's actually cutting probes, so anything that gets lost here is even worse than it would normally be. The booty's been very good about their worker production. More reinforcements is going to keep putting pressure on, and like at this point, like Ooh. these goons might be able to help out here. But the booties, I think the damage they've done, it seems pretty worth it, especially there. Ooh, up to a five worker lead, doing a great job. And these zealots keep coming in. Oh, nice block there with uh, Ashball Zealot. You know, honestly, Ashbull did micro his pros very well, though, all things considered. And here's the thing. Oh, no, that injured goon dies. I was going to say, DBD sh uh, should be behind on goon count, but, I mean, he did lose one for free now, so actually things probably equalized pretty well. And like you say, better probe count for DBD's. That's honestly the all-important thing, even though he's banking a huge amount. I guess 10 12 just the better opening. Uh. Yeah, I was going to say, there, there was definitely an opportunity to get this robo a little bit earlier, I believe, but... I mean, Dabuti is trying to make sure they're not in a giant void of technology working on the goon range, which they are behind on, but it will come up reasonably soon. High ground advantage will make it a little bit easier to defend until that is ready, but both players just adapting into the same build. So if nothing really happens, Dabuti's, I think, done the damage you're really looking for. You can see that defender is really kicking in right now. Yeah, this is a bit brazen of Ashball to get that close to the ramp. Nice micro from Dabuti's pulling back the injured goon, but with that zealot, he will be able to ward off Dabuti's goons and get out of here. Well, the Zealot is slow. I mean, if DBD really wants to press the issue, he can probably shut that down, but he does not. Bet play is playing pretty conservative here, going for the same build in the end uh, to, to get Robo. Um, but of course, like we say, DBD is the economic advantage. He's going to be able to throw down the Nexus pretty much right now. It looks like he's. No, he's going to send a scanning probe instead. I think you want to have an idea of what your opponent's doing. You haven't yeah. seen if they're going into a bunch of gateways, if they're rushing for reavers, if they took in their own expansion, trying to get some kind of idea. And you can see, I think the booty's really trying to value that, going way the hell out of the way. Or maybe just looking for some kind of proxy technology, because there was a fax nexus. I think he just wants to avoid Ashball's army, like it is moving out right now, right? And he would not have actually seen anything. Um, and I guess you're right, having seen his opponent already have two gates, which obviously is a response to 1012 anyway, uh, they could go in three gates quite easily, which is exactly what he's doing. Now, I think uh, DBD will be able to hold this anyway with a reaver, just because uh, it would take time for the green count to catch up for Ashball. Um, but it is good intel to have if your opponent's going DT or what. It's still going to be a little bit of time, though, because they're getting the Observer. Like, if, even if they get the Reaver next, it'll be nice, but you won't have a shuttle. Like, you got to be very careful with your positioning. Trying to go for this Nexus, since the Probe does see a lack of an expansion. It doesn't it didn't see the stuff on the map, so it doesn't really know what's about to head here. Right now, they're in a good spot defensively. Even that extra pylon could help out here. The fight's going to engage. Ball is doing a great job doing some focus fire early on, but there's more going for the boots. He just tried to pull back, but unfortunately a couple of goons get picked off. But he does just have enough of a nice concave. I mean, yeah, that was that was again pretty reckless from Ashball to uh, attack into that. And those goons are set up in such a nice concave. And honestly, he was like matching the goon count, even though Ashball has more gates for now. Now, if he keeps getting even trades before the Reaver is out, uh, Ball might be able to break through. But for now, it doesn't look like he's trying again. Just a spot up and going down. I think it's all coming back to those pros that are lost early. Definitely. Like I don't think he's been able to do a full constant production. You can see it's hampering. Battery even coming down, although I question the positioning a little. Yeah, I mean, it's up pretty far forward. I think if you don't have the shuttle, you gotta figure where you're gonna position your reaver to keep it safe pretty far back, so as well, making sure that no, if it's in the fight, it's in the range of the shield battery, might be pretty good, but you know, making it hard to kill, not a bad idea. I, I just like the position we're seeing from Dabuti's though. Yeah. And yeah, we'll see. Like, Ball's gotta make a choice. I don't know if I like him going for the Nexus here, like just trying to catch up. It well, might work out later, but Mm, he's got so many goods. I would like to see at least poking forward. You can always leave. You can always come back, but at least poke and see if there's a chance. It's risky though, because if you get a bad engage, your opponent has the goon count. Suddenly they're pushing across the map and getting the contain. Uh, I, yeah, I but you can always like leave. You can always leave. There's no like you're yeah, committed. Yeah, but if you poke <laughs> in, you're you're guaranteed to take a certain number of hits, right? And if you lose a couple goons, then it's kind of dicey. 
And like, yeah, you can run, but what if they chase you and get the container at your ramp? You don't want that. Especially with Reavers coming okay. out. Because once, once, once you have a container with Goons and Reavers, then it, there's just no easy way to get out. Yeah, and so this is a bit more interesting. Ball's deciding to go forward and see what they can get done, but they know exactly how much defense is here. If they're just going to be comfortable with a contain, I like the decision. But, like, then I would want to see maybe some spotter pylons on the bottom side. So to see a drop that might be a window into, you know, being aware that's like, the booties is just going to be comfortable. Harass would be the only thing they're going to do. They're not going to just try to bust out for no reason. They're comfortable right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, like, again, they have such a good defensive arc here. Even these goons on the high ground rip them over. Um, yeah, and, like, only goons against Goon Reaver? I don't know. I mean, it's just a clear advantage for Dibuti's right, let alone the supply advantage aside that. Shuttle speed coming up. Now, we did get the Robo for Ball, presumably just to deal DTs, though. No Reaver tech coming out, no Citadel or anything. So he is just Goon Man right now. And look, man, if I could choose between Hydra Man and Goon Man, I would choose Hydra Man every time. Yeah, because it makes a lot more sense, especially at this phase in the game. You could see that's like if Ball's cutting away all this technology, not getting rears out all this stuff. He's like, well, they should have a lot of goons, but they don't have that many more. You can see there's actually still even down supply. So as far as like the army goes, it's not very potent in comparison. But he does like he's gonna add on a lot more gateways. He's going big gateway man. I really would like to see a citadel. If this is what you're gonna do though. Get zealot legs really, you know, have a chance of this being good. And we're gonna drop and we're gonna move it across the bottom side. Shuttle speed, I'm not sure when it's gonna finish in relation, but the observer seeing a clear path to harass the natural. I guess it's gonna finish like as he's leaving, more or less. Um, but yeah, this is just gonna be pure goons, right? What's he gonna do with that exactly? Because you can't shove more and more goons into a choke. Like we all know how that's gonna go. If he was on the map and maybe try to take a third nexus, like use use something, but he's not even he's very like holed up in his own base here. It's, Ooh, well, actually, I don't really like the decision we're seeing. Hold that thought, because Reaver's coming in. I just wanted to say that. Look, the observer flash uh, just in time for him to react. Pulls the probes away. That is a clutch observer, and literally just saved all those probes. Well, okay, yeah, no, it didn't. Yeah, that, sa saved <laughs> some probes. <laughs> yeah, it's saved most of the probes. Um, so honestly, that observer really saving the day there. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so maybe that's the plan from Ball, though. He just gets so many goons that if Dibuti's moves out, he can take a good engage, and at the same time, he's going to take his third here. I think that's his plan to get back. Because if he sets up a huge concave at this natural area, I don't think Dibuti's can come out just yet. But he does have to move out, I feel like. I mean, the, the, when someone just tries to roll up and do some defense, you want to be a little bit more cautious, I guess. Uh, I mean, like, it's hard, because if you look at what Ball's army is right now, the booties, I think, even just in an open field, ignore the Reavers, they have more goods right now, don't they? Uh, did you hit speed up your Yes, life? I did accidentally, don't worry. <laughs> I was trying to press ult you when I pressed you, just for a second. Yeah, Yeah. I, I, no, I saw I saw the goods bouncing a little faster, I'm like, ooh, they're excited. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sorry, guys, that was a complete accident. Um, yeah, I maybe mean, you're right about that, actually. Look, I feel like if Ashball had taken the position on the map beforehand, this wouldn't be the same story, but now that he's kind of sitting back here, it probably does just mean that, okay, DVD's gonna come up with his superior army and smash him. Now, look, I know it's not a lot of minerals, but surely you can send a goon or two and save your, like, you know, 80 minerals or whatever you're spending killing this pylon. Like, how many, how many scarabs is that? That's like seven scarabs, right? Yeah, I, I particularly don't like that because, if nothing else, you gave him plenty of time to realize, well, there's the Reavers, and show that the shuttle has speed. Wait, that's actually 105 minerals, I just realized, if it's 7 Scarabs. It, it costs more to kill a pylon than it's worth. Oh my god, these Reavers! Okay, they do turn around. That could have been huge. Oh, these goons yeah. go in the wrong way. Oh dear. I mean, that's already kind of huge, losing 3 goons for... Basically nothing at this point, not exactly what you're looking for, and you can see how much f even further advanced Dabooz is on tech. They're yes. working towards Psystorm halfway done already, banking up a decent amount of money as well. Ball has caught up on workers and they're really kind of kicking in, but the tech is so delayed for them. You can see it's all like just being started. It's not going to be ready for quite a while, and Dabooz is going to try to attack, shut down this third. Is this the entire army for Ball? <gasps> oh my god, there it goes! Well, the, the Reaver's gone now, but I mean, just the good count alone, like you were saying, looks like it's kind of enough for Dibuti's. The Zealot's getting in and tanking pretty well, even though there's not that many of them. Looks like... Oh my gosh, I can't even tell. A few slow Zealots coming out from Ball. This fight is so close, but look at the flanking speed Zealots and the DT as well. Gonna get in right on top of these goons for Ball, and I think Dibuti's will crush through here. A single Templar about Storm Research shows up to join. He's just gonna hug the enemy, as we were discussing. 
And now look at this, he's hitting straight for the third. Doesn't want to engage in a prolonged fight here, he's gonna go up and kill that Nexus, I think. Ooh, Zelt at the natural as well, too. Dibuti is sending the reinforcements, gaining a good spot. This Storm does finally research, does some pretty big damage here. I think Dibuti is going to be able to put a lot of pressure on his third. And at the natural as well, these speed Zell is about to finish their first weapons upgrade as well. So on both sides, Ball is just behind the gun, having a little bit of trouble with this. Templar might go down here, but this next is taking big damage. That third is gone for sure. Definitely, and the Zealots in the natural are still fighting. I mean, they're getting kind of surrounded right now, but I mean, they've done their job distracting Ball for sure. Um, and yeah, like, he's still at this little army left over. He's probably going to attack the natural with that too. And look at this, taking his third in the meantime. Now, he kind of gave up on the 9 o'clock a bit too easily, if you ask me, but nonetheless, he's taking a third base. Now, look at the solution. Protoss having problems, you make the DTs. That solves all problems, right? I mean, I, I suppose. <laughs> like... Uh, it's, it, it, I think that's just one of those brilliant ideas your opponent goes, oh, okay, but there's an Observer Ard here, so unfortunately it's just going to be a fragile piece of very high DPS, gets cleaned up almost immediately. Ball Supply still trying to keep up the best they can here, but the fact that they can't make Reavers to help out with this, six way, gateways is all the production they have, and you can see the money starting to pile up here. I think the booties, even if they don't want to commit further, it's already done the job they're looking to do. But look, more reinforcements moving across the map, trying to consolidate an army, and we'll see if he wants to move forward. Well, the zealot senses something is wrong, and he's like, wait a minute, why are the probes going past? <laughs> <laughs> but the cannons will unfortunately do him. Oh, look at the whole cannon battery ready for this zealot. Oh dear. Oh, poor thing. Um, but that base will go up. Yeah, and I think it's about a turn to DBD's these powers up for the next attack. I'm not really sure what Asper has hoped for here. All his DTs uh, did not achieve anything. And this base is so many cannons, not like there's anything there. Yeah, later in the game, PP, you do need cannons at every base, so shenanigans will happen. Yeah, I think it, that's just the big part of it, is if you think about some of the stuff about PvP, one of the biggest things that if you don't want to go Reavers is it's, you know, frees up a lot of gas, it frees up a lot of resources that you can use to getting your other tech ahead, but the booties went Reavers and Speed Shuttle and still got Storm first? Yeah. It's like, like, Ball never really had this clear advantage. The, the expansion was slower, the, didn't make a clear choice on the tech, unfortunately. I just think the way we saw this kind of play out, the booty is just a little more familiar with the matchup. That being said, Ball's still doing a good job staying in. His supply is still relatively even. That work count did catch up quite a bit from early on. And all it's going to take is one bad fight. And as these two armies circle around each other, the game is about to get weird. Yeah, I mean, I don't really see the base face happening here. I think Ash Ball just has to turn around and try desperately to do something. But yeah, look, he does come back. But what does he have here? So many Templars out for Dibunis. Now, that said, there's not many goons, but I mean, what does he really need them for? Oh, oh he's got a lot of speed cells. Dibunis it doesn't even matter. Around? Now, that I would not have expected. I think he feels like he's in a good spot. He does have that third base, and he's got starting to set up for the fourth. You just need to not take critical damage. I actually don't mind the decision here from Dibuti. I guess he just verified that Ball didn't retake the third, and then it's like, okay, so he's going to go back and do this dance again, and you're just going to get poorer and poorer. Oh my gosh, I want a storm to go down so badly right now. On either side, I don't really care. Just just someone throw down a storm. Oh, <laughs> one single goon pokes forward. Looks like it's going to start that engage. No, Ball pulls back. And Ball, honestly, he has a considerable amount of stuff here. He doesn't have that many Templars, but he has a fair amount of Zealot Goon. All those pros. Yeah, but there, there are Archons. There's more, a good amount of Dragoons. Plenty of splash damage in the Storms for the Booties. He's going to start firing off first. There's your Storms that you were looking for. Oh, the army oh, oh, oh. does engage a little bit late, taking a lot of splash damage. <laughs> those Zealots got absolutely devastated by that Storm. That's a good one, though, from Ball. Um, and I don't even know who casted it, but I know it was good for Ball. <laughs> Going it up on this high ground here, mostly Goons trying to attack. DT is actually doing work. Oh, they do get picked off though. Uh, and yeah, D Booty's just from a bigger army that's gonna crush through here. GG. Hug. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. The, ha the, ha the have game good hands. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a pretty good PvP. Got pretty big. Didn't quite yeah, get honestly, honestly, that's not bad though for how Ball played it because I mean they're, they're switching races around. Like they they play multiple things, so you know if they're a little right. less familiar with the magic because they haven't only played Protoss, that's the way they play is not bad. Just you know that like thought for the future to a little be a little more focused and it'll do them wonders. Yes, it was uh, there definitely uh, some some strategic mistakes there honestly, but uh, like 
you know, I feel like I feel like no side really like you know made any huge mechanical blunders. They look pretty solid, so this group looking kind of scary. All right, getting into our next game here. In the top left, returning we have DVDs. Top left, top right, and in the bottom left we have Light Swarm in the blue. So now we're. Oh, uh, can, can can we please start in the top left? Start with the double gas in the old, <laughs> in the location <laughs> you're not expecting. Okay, so as uh, Protoss against Zerg, you're gonna start in a location that has no choke. You think you're gonna time okay. to use those double gas? You can wall in a, like a, a reverse ramp if you think that's gonna help you, but spoiler, it's not. Okay. Um. I withdraw how cool that could be. It would be cool in uh, different matchups. In different matchups, that'd be cool. Okay, in, in, I don't know. In PvP, your opponent goes three gate root goon, and there's no way you can hold because you have two reverse ramps to defend. In PvT, they just start sieging on the high ground. Like, imagine a two fact coming like that. If you had double gas, you could get a faster DT rush than they would ever think coming. Could you though? I mean, I feel like it'd still be mineral limited in the end. Because you can do the DT rush where you take like you know gas before core. Just to save up enough to get the Temporal Archive. Just let me live my fantasy, man. No, like, I will why, crush why your dreams. Why are you dreams. shooting down? I will <laughs> crush your dreams. Guys, Sig Zero is having too good a day. Someone ruin it. Go guess before this Kate. Is, this, is the, this is the guy I like to cast with? What is happening right That's now? That's right. Why are you so mean? Did, did the American trip run, rub off on you? Is this what you're <laughs> about now? This is how Americans act. I don't know. Uh, so a lot of times, yeah. sadly. <laughs> well, you know, they're nice enough to tour us this probe, trying to get in there. Relying on his shields. See, so the Zerg still regenerates, but since they don't have shields or anything, I assume they still feel like pain, you know, since they're suffering actual bodily injuries. This probe is a robot anyway. Yeah, but maybe they enjoy it. You don't know what they're about. Well, <laughs> well hmm, I don't like that. Their entire, like, Droid's entire game plan is... I'm going to be this thing, and then I'm going to kill myself to become a building. They're Maybe they enjoy themselves. it. They're not They're just metamorphizing. By the way, that probe coming back in the last possible second. Okay, does finally let him put it down. Doesn't want to lose that probe. A decent block there. He, it, I really thought that Light Swarm was going to get it down first try, by the way. By the way, Light Swarm on... The, well, I was going to say Team 6, but we have a name. On the United EMU Directorate, so we have to rep the best team. Isn't that right, Set Zero? Uh, I'm not on the uh, I know you're not, but you admit they're the best legend. team, right? No. Ah, damn <laughs> That's not who I picked on the team draft, uh, who, who I thought was going to be good. Oh, okay. Well, all the teams... I mean, I mean you now. you are... I, I don't know them yet. Why are you doing this to me tonight? Like, I'm just here to watch some StarCraft talk with the boys. What is no, happening? No, no fun for you. <laughs> um, I was just saying, Light Storm says, Nibble, I'm teaching more Zerg builds. Oh, well, um... There's nine pool speed, and uh, <laughs> there's like um, there's like nine pool where you get gas and you make the lair right away. Um, uh, oh, there's nine pool speed, and then you get burrow. That one's pretty good too. Any other questions? <laughs> um, so is that going for a third base here? Probably set up a pretty normal forge. Yeah, it's really gonna be up against the boost. Keep this probe alive. It's a lot of damage, but it's still snaking around, still being annoying, but leaves the main voluntarily, which is going to be a little bit annoying if you want to try to get some kind of knowledge about what's going on. Yeah, it's going to finish. We'll see what the decision is going to be. Yeah, I think Lightstorm, a little more of a Hydra player. A Look little bit more. Tag team. <laughs> probe tag team. Um, honestly, I don't really know he's PBZ. Um, you know, I know... Well, if, he, if, he's, if he's willing to use Hydras in ZVZ, you think he's not going to use them to match up their good? It makes sense, right? It makes sense. <laughs> but uh, I, I just don't want to assume anything, you know? It could be going Mutalisks. Who knows? He, he hates Mutalisks in ZVZ, but loves them in PVC. Who knows? That could be the secret. Oh, I missed hey. that probe dying because I heard a cannon shooting. Oh, Lynx are trying to get in. Wow. Uh, see, you know, obviously Mutalisks are, like, really good in every matchup, but I think PVZ is the matchup where they're the weakest, because just, like, if they get the unit, they're just not very good, you know? Whereas the other two matchups, like, no matter what, they're still useful. Well, we'll see if it's even going to matter. It is that Hydra Den. You know, playing on Eclipse, the walls can get a little bit funny. You got giant area to set up your contain outside the natural. No one likes dealing with this as Protoss, but you gotta be ready for it. The booties is well aware this could be a possibility. You'll see what they're gonna do here. Still going for the weapons upgrade on the forge. I know sometimes people would get the armor instead. And still getting well, the stargate, so. Yet. 
For all he knows, it could be Muta Ling. Uh, but he gets in well, here. Well, I mean, he, he, he did see a Hydra Den in there. <laughs> oh, he saw that with the other robot just now. Uh, just now. Yeah, so. Are you really going to cancel plus one weapons when it's like, you know, 35% done or whatever? No, but, like, I guess the question is what we're going to see at the Stargate. Will he actually make Corsairs more than one? Or is he going to try to go for the supply block to slow things down? Second cannon on the way, so Debus knows what's up. Uh, maybe being a little bit preemptive here, setting things up, but we'll see when that attack goes. And then you see Link starting to get out on the map just to be annoying. Yeah, and they are going to come up here and, you know, start just watching everything the Protoss does, but the Overlord's kind of already there, so they kind of just uh, incept probes, I guess. Um, now, given that it's scouted, do you want to try and, like, half-ass this, or do you still kind of just go for it as, uh, you know what I mean by half-assing it, right? You just make a few hydras and then you go back to droning. Yeah, that's why this build's the most annoying. It's, it's so easy to just be like, you know what, just kidding, male. It's just a prank, bro. I don't, I don't even like hydras. Tell us everything Zerg <laughs> does, like, Ling's are running at your wall, oh no, 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 I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'll do something else, you know. Ooh. Corsair immediately going to try working on some overlords, stake some shield damage, has to be careful. Hydra's already at the wall, and you can see they got the movement upgrade, the range is still a bit away. Dubuze makes a third cannon, and I guess he wants to see what kind of investment. got to get that Corsair in a spot, you oh, sped it up again. again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. Normally I press Alt U and I don't screw it up. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Um, yeah, we see Lightstorm getting that fourth hatchery, by the way, right away, so looking like he's going to transition out of this indeed. Now look at this, the attack's coming in, the Ling's going to be actually just totally useless with those Zealots there, by like half a second for the Hydra's. But he's sniping down the cannons, ooh, the Zealot's getting a lot of damage on, the Pro's being pulled very quickly there, so not going to be able to get in there. And honestly, I don't know if that was even worth it for Lightstorm, might have been better to preserve those Hydra's till range was done. Yeah, but I think, you know, before these cannons finish, we're going to make the move, see if we can get them done, and... What Dabuti is not really being in a spot where, of course, they're seeing if more hydras are being made. He's got to get some information to get an idea of what's going on. We do see range is done working on these outside buildings. That gateway taking big damage, but there's already two remain the main, so it's not like unit production is going to be far off. But look, Temple Archives hasn't even started yet. Storm will not be an option for this defense. Well, that's not good actually. I assume he got the Citadel in a timely manner, so I assume he's going to drop Storm. But he's getting Zealot Lakes here. So yeah, what what do you even do? I guess he was hoping that Light Swarm would kind of half ass it, but Light, Light Swarm kind of like three quarter assed it and has like he's been building these hatcheries, but he's also been building hydras only. So he has plenty. And look at that, he's gonna try and hit these gateways. Seeing Zealot Speed is done, I would think he would pull back, but no, he's still just going for it. That's a mistake. A lot of hydras falling actually. Light Swarm seemed like he had a pretty devastating position, but now he's lost a lot of hydras. And DBDs, I feel like, can almost produce enough cells to keep up with this. Not that many gates going up, though. DBDs banking up a lot of minerals here. Temple Archives still not on the way. Oh, dear. Yeah. And I think also there was a, maybe an opportunity if you actually finished off the forge. It had, like, 18 health. It was so close. Corsair is getting the scouting info. What it needs to see what's going on here. No lair started, so like you're pretty comfortable as the booze if you just survive. If you can hold on here, the, but the fact there's still no temple archives is just driving me up a wall. Remaking corsairs though, once the you know maybe start working on these overlords, not a bad idea. Lightstorm still making aggressive units. Cans about to warp in, but again another dive in, trying to get something done. But so many cans are ready for the defense. Lightstorm keeps pulling the trigger slightly too early. I want to see Dibuti's actually try and move across the map right now because the number of Hydras here is just straight up not enough and he needs to break out of like being stuck in his natural though because the Hydras can still speed forward and snipe stuff. Lightstorm leaves the game. It was top of us bottom, so it's alright. Don't start the recommendations. <laughs> he probably sent you. But yeah, I think yeah. It, he just kind of attacked just kind of the wrong timings and surprisingly Dibuti survives just making a... Uh, Speed Zealots in there. I guess Speed Zealots are pretty good, you know, huh? Yeah, they're, they're definitely not bad. Like, we're saying in the chat, they need to learn how to follow it up. I think knowing when to stop and try to transition out. Like, not like, oh, I made this attack and it failed. I have to transition. It's like, this attack's not going to work. I'm not going to try to force it to happen. Yeah, I would say if you're at the point where you're building more high trees, you're probably already thinking, like, okay, I want economy out of this. You just start draining up. Um, and like, you know, the Hydras you have, instead of attacking and losing them, you just keep them to menace the Protoss. Shoot down buildings for free if you can, but then you can uh, stop Zealots coming out as well for a time. Like, I'd say probably after the first attack, like when you there was one cannon left and all the others walked in, that's when you probably say like, okay, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try taking this a different direction. Alright. In the top right, in the grey, we have my fleeting dream. 
in the bottom left. Also in the grey, we have Ash Ball. They did not host up this bottom, so... Grey City, let's go. Well, I mean, that, that is a very nice, light, soothing blue. That's at least a little different, but on the minimap, it's very hard to tell. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, this is the worst. At least it's not a mirror. TBP now. Now, my fleeting dream. I believe this is the first CPL, and I think this is the first time they've even been cast, right? Unless you casted one without me? I, I mean, I think I might have, but I actually do not recall this name, so I do believe this is their first showing, so... The first so CPL see, official cast, we should say, because some of the community casts might have done it without us knowing. Very possible, but I mean, we're talking. This is week two games, group thirty nine. This is some pretty high up their play. We yes. know some of these other players. We know the quality they're being thrown against. So this will be very exciting to see well, what these players are going to offer for us. Actually, I have no idea what Ball's going to be doing strategy wise because from what we saw in the PVP, admit you know not being super focused, that definitely does not work in PVT. Unless you go full gateway, man, you. Like, you want to make sure you're working towards Arbiters or working towards Carriers. Like, you got to kind of make a choice. Yeah, I mean, look, if you put those gates in near Terran, it's kind of a thing, but you've got to be putting them at an earlier supply than that, that's for sure. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll have, we'll have to see. And obviously, Fleeting Dream, we've got no clue at all what like, kind of skill level they have, what kind of builds they're going to bring here. So far, just putting down uh, there uh, some city. Apparently not new, according to the Kegers. So. Really? Were they in at least CPL at least around, I. I just don't recall the name, so maybe yeah. they just lucked into never getting cast. Is that luck? I like being cast. I'd like to be cast all the time. But speaking of, uh, this reminds me now of my uh, King of the Tears TVT series where we. Both yeah, no, I, I, so yeah, I looked at the bracket. <laughs> it you lost and loser finals, and I'm like, you lost TVT. I'm like, oh, I'm he sorry, almost man. did it to us. <laughs> look, look, you want you want my excuses? You want to hear my justifications? I wasn't gonna say anything, but you. I, ju I just want to. I just want to hear. Was it your Sim City? Please tell me your Sim City fucked something up. No, it was nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what happened? Well, okay. If you want my donors to the actual game, like Exit ended up pushing like a base that had inadequate defense, and I never really took that position back. Um, but, mm. but okay. Look, I got up at four a.m. to play in King of the Tier. By the way, um, I played for like three and a half hours. I played several close games that were like almost half an hour in length. And then, so when I finally faced Exit, I have to say, like, you know, it was it was tough. I mean, that does seem pretty reasonable. We'll give you a pass. All right, I've, I've, guys, I've obtained Saint Zero's permission to lose TBT. Look, I was sad about it, uh, I'm not going to lie. When I'm like, damn, I got eliminated in TBT. I was sad about it. Because, you know, the time I won, I played Snipe and other Terrans only. So I'm like, if I just get Terrans all the time... You know what was really happening, actually? The whole time... Oh, this probe, by the way. I'll stop talking about the actual game in a second, guys, I swear. Okay, the probe's dead. Well, I mean, it, it's, PV games. It, it's PVT. The opener is going to be very familiar for quite some time. They're also both <laughs> like, we're, great, we're so screw this name, right? Screw, screw this name. Screw this game. <laughs> <laughs> so, the whole time, every, after every game, I was looking at the bracket to see where Doodle Doodle was, because I thought he was probably, like, the favorite to win the whole thing. So... I was like, I was like, oh, I'm in the losers bracket. I won't have to play him soon. But then he went down to the losers bracket, but then miraculously he got eliminated. So I was like, oh, I have a chance. I mean, the tiers of your bracket looked pretty stacked. Ooh, the scouting SV it almost died to a movie shot probo. The goon is here. Oh, he's still Come alive. on, stop this scout! God damn it! <laughs> he's still alive. Get out of there. Not like this. Not like this. Oh, he, oh, okay. he could have actually made it out. By the way, if he swiftly went to the right there, he probably would have made it back to base. Uh, but he does get picked off. So, did you play in the tier 2 now, are you? I don't even know what tier you're in, Saint Zero. I would be tier 2, but I'm not playing, so I, I hung around to make sure I can cast if, if needed. So, we cast yeah. the finals. Uh, Cole Warpgate's made the mistake of casting games during. As we're seeing a little more remove out just to kill the scout, that's pretty good going far enough out where the probe does not see if there's a CC on the way or a bunker or anything. So, uh, we have an FD coming up now. Mm -hmm. Look, since this is the first time I've cast Fleeting Dream, and like, I, I'm really sorry if I'm screwing this up and I cast him like three times last season, but I'm like 99% sure I didn't. Then, this is only a sample size of one game, but it could mean he's like a little bit more of an old school player, like, I don't know. If you started playing Group War in like, I don't know, 20, 2019 or something, you probably wouldn't be doing FD, I don't know. Because it's, it's definitely. I mean, that around. could be, but also, think about preseason. FD is a pretty safe way to make sure shenanigans aren't going to kill you if you just want to get a good game. True, well that implies that he's kind of like a late game player, more confident dragging the game out. By the way, this probe, where the hell is he going? Is he, is he I think avoiding the place? army just wants to... I hope not. Like, that'd yeah. be good to go get the, the timing on the CC, see what's going on here. And now this push was not slowed down at all by Goons, it's just going to roll up here. SCV does go down, but you got to be careful of the damage you take. Going for that tank, really diving in here, and does manage to take out 
the Vulture wasn't here in time to lay mines for support. And well, this is a little bit unfortunate. Nexus does finish, mines go down, but this push did get eliminated. That poor goon was like, I'm going to drag the mine and be a hero, but it was so unnecessary and everything was already dead. It's just like, oh, well, I guess I'm dying anyway. Yeah, so it, it was a poorly coordinated attack by Fleet Dream, I have to say. Oh, this Vulture doing its best. Man, how's that thing alive? So, yeah, the STV kind of ran in on its own and died before it could do anything. And he only bought one as well, which is kind of weird. Normally you bring like two, I would say. Oh, another Vulture going to try its luck, but that is just going to be a donation here. Um, and then, yeah, the tank was just so far forward and not pulled back in time. So, not a good FD at all for Terran. Anytime you lose the tank, unless you, like, kill Protoss Nexus or something, it's not a good time. And look at this. Uh, Bull's going to just go across and start his third, which I think is the perfect response to this. You're just like, okay, well, you, you, didn't, you don't have a tank. You literally don't have a tank right now. So, I'm just going to go build a Nexus. Good luck. Yeah, one of the biggest things I'm used to seeing from this kind of push is if it does damage, great. But you don't overextend because you want the mines to slow down any potential counterattack from your opponent. But there's yes. nothing on the map. No vision, no slowing down anything. Oh my uh, god, my fleeing team should Oh no. This probe oh, just no. gets right in there. See, it's two facts in eBay. Honestly, but like after a failed FD, I'm not really sure what there is to see. As long as you know there's an expansion. I mean, I guess he could be going drop or something. But there's not really super many options for Terran to go with. They kind of just have to sit here and power up for a while. That, trying to kill that will, SCV! Oh. oh my god, he almost got it. I will say, at least a good option from my flame D to get a vulture to the third, so that next did not get started, even Ooh. though Ball did move out for it. That is an excellent move, and you know what? The Observer only just out, so uh, Ball just playing safe, doesn't want to run his screens into mines here. Uh, now, he's going for a Citadel pretty fast here. Now, I assume it's going to be four Arbiters. I don't think he's going to go with any DT shenanigans or anything like that right away. But the Storm Drop playstyle is very popular on this map. We'll see if uh, Ball kind of subscribes to that theory. But when you're this ahead, honestly, I, I, I like just going up to Arbiters. Because um, if you just go for like a recall real fast or something, for example, depending on what Terran's trying to do, right? If Terran, Terran plays super conservative, then obviously there's not much play. But if they're like, I'm behind, I'm trying to get back, they take the third a bit fast or something like that, a timing attack with stasis or a sudden recall can be devastating. Well, also, just I personally like going Arbiters because, especially if there's any kind of big dedicated push, maybe you didn't get the scouting for you needed or your opponent, like the macro surprised you a little bit. Stasis can keep you alive. Drops, That's like, true. yeah, they, they can as well, but Stasis, I think, is a lot easier to shut down a push really effectively. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, definitely one of the best spells in this matchup. Um, a lot of utility. Now, see, look at this. This is what I was talking about. Flame Dream getting his, his command center off only two factories here. Now, once upon a time, I would have said this is totally normal, but honestly, in 2022, on Eclipse, people just don't do this anymore. It's always like, you go up to four factories or more, you sit here for a while, upgrading, and then eventually take the third. Because honestly, this third is hard to defend. With the distance you have between your natural and your third, in the later game, when you have enough units, you can set up a pretty robust defense on this ramp, but in this early game, once like Zealot Speed is out, this becomes quite a difficult location. Yeah, I will say at least he's going to be getting a little bit of a reprieve. Still no Temple Archive started, not moving towards those fast Arbiters. It's only even five gateways, so uh, I think Ball, again, a little bit of that lack of the focus in the build decision. Like, he's in a good spot getting that third Nexus. Everything's kind of developing nicely, but that nice big mid-game, late-game tech that like is really going to open some potential up for him, he hasn't really chose anything he wants to do. Well, like you were saying, it's very fortunate that Vulture denied the third. Because that actually made a huge difference how much more delayed that was. If that went up right mm. when uh, Bill wanted to build it, he would be so ahead right now. And with Fleet Dream getting this pretty fast CC, honestly, things look remarkably even if Bull isn't able to put any kind of pressure. Which is not necessarily saying he should be trying to do that. Starport on way and starting to have more factories, so... I'm, I'm fully ready for adding on that second armor again, the science facility, and just fle fleeing dreams. Trying to secure his third and just big waiting because outside that very early the little overcommitment on the fd fleeting dream is like maybe thrown out a vulture or two hoping for some kind of miracle with no real uh, move to even secure a like, good vision with uh spider mines or really like try to harass anything just really building up back at home uh, kind of setting up this fortress i am kind of concerned that bull's army is just kind of sitting in his base such as it is i guess he really doesn't have that much huh um and not really getting in the Terran's face at all. Terran kind of has the freedom to move around as much as they want. Uh, and he's building up a lot of speed cells here. Without any other tech, I would assume you have to go for an attack with this, but he's not. Neither ticking nor attacking, so... Terran eventually, I think, is going to be in a good position here. Um, you know, with delaying that third and taking his own, I really think he's, he's come back a lot. After a, a very ineffective FD. 
Yeah, I, I'm just it for for a, a passive kind of build. This is not the kind of build I want to see. Like all this time, if Ball's not going to attack, if they're just kind of prepping up, this could be the time to get your carrier started. You need a long yeah. time to do that anyway. This could have been it. <laughs> yep, yeah. and honestly, again, when you like crush an attack, I feel like carriers are a good option too. Because you know that it's going to take longer for him to attack. Now, a scan goes down, sees that fall. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, that's not where he's scan. Where did he scan just now? I heard a scan, but I, I guess he scanned for an observer. I didn't see the Goliath pick it off. Maybe kill it if they were. I, I honestly have no idea where he just scanned. I am perplexed. Now, look at this. Not sure, but he did find the fourth with an SCP. So he yes, does he know did. that Ball has just uh, uh, secured another base. So we see uh, Fleeting Dreams setting up the kind of defense at this ramp now. I mean,. It's not as heavy as it could be, but I think he just gets the concept here that you kind of just defend this ramp and, and spread over the rest of the map to the left here. Um, second army inside the city coming up, like you were saying, and the factory explosion getting started. So I see Terrans getting everything they need, whereas Protoss kind of stuck back in like tier 2 tech here, finally getting a uh, Templar Archives now at 11 minutes in the game. That is extremely late. Terran scans, and they're going to see these Templar Archives, and they're probably going to be very happy seeing that. They're going to be like, oh great, Arbiter's not ready for like 5 minutes. And also not seeing the sidecore blinking, not seeing mm. a ton of gateways. This is like, this is the reason why my game is for four, four base. Like, even this is not going to really get the job done soon. So, like, it's like it, it's, gateways, uh, yeah. This, yeah, this is not like anything threatening, kind of on any force. But I, I'm hearing some stuff fire, right? You're hearing stuff or, fire, did you say? I hear scans. Uh, then maybe I just said some kind of. Oh, you're right. I thought, actually, I, thought, I, thought I heard clearing mines up here. No, you're right. You're right. A goon's yeah. clearing mines <laughs> with the big ring. I did not okay. hear that at all. <laughs> yeah, look, um, as, as well as Macron, okay, I mean, he does need a couple more gates now, I think, but I do question the strategic decision. Ten gates for four bases is not bad, could be better, but it, it's not bad. And we can see he's keeping his money down pretty well, but, again, like, in the end, Terran is going to scale better here, especially once the upgrades get really get up there. Now, Terran is very slow on starting plus two. This is somehow already done. Okay, I would have been embarrassed. <laughs> no, Terran's slow on starting no. plus two, so... The time when Terran will have the advantage is further away still, but the number of tanks he's been able to build up and he will continue to build up is going to be a problem for pure Zealot Goon. Yeah, I mean, we went to double armory and it took a while to actually get those upgrades going. And now, at what point, because uh, Fleendrink has established a third base, has had it for a while, when do you add that third machine shop? Because I thought it was one per gas, so I thought you want to get that nice and early. Generally speaking, you spend all the gas to get your upgrades and your science sources going, then you worry about adding more shops, and you can go up to more than three, of course, as well. Um, and you can see he does not have a gas bank here, he only just started plus two and all that. I don't think he researched EMP as well. Because it takes a lot of gas to get the starport, the second armory. EMP, of course, costing 200 gas on its own and so on. Sorry, I, I just realized I'm costing you state zero. EMP shockwave. Now, hang on a second. The zealots look like they're ready to run straight up that ramp. No, they get distracted. Two are going to go straight up that ramp. A tiny protoss force just attacking in here. And honestly, these two zealots up here might cause some trouble. Well, he got two tanks for like six zealots so far. Not really the best trade, but it might be all right. Well, look at the move on the bottom. I think you're trying to fish things out of position, see what kind of defense you're laying against. Well, might have been looking to take another attack, but Fleeing Dream very spread out here. Didn't overcommit defending that, so well, they try to like go in. Three it's units. Ooh, and they are getting slashed, by the way. Yeah, no, that was not worth it for Protostall. Finally brings up the rest of the army, but honestly, the defenses here are very strong. Once Terran gets, like, you know, maybe maybe a little more than this many tanks, it's kind of impossible to win with just a regular fight. You need some kind of trick, like stasis or flanks or, you know, big drops. Because, um, yeah, this is just the kind of Terran army that will shred Zelagoon for days. Well, I mean, it, soon it's going to shred pretty much anything. 2 ones on the way, and look at the supply. The Indrim's going to max about the same time as Ball, and where's Ball's late-game tech? I still don't see this Arbiter, I still don't see a move towards carriers, not that many gateways, what is going to be the play as they hit max and you don't have two mains worth of space to, to have like 25 gateways to re-max on a bad fight? I think he's just going pure Zelda Dream, he just got that archive for upgrades. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the true betrayal. Look at this, he's just coming up on the left again. Now, Terran Unsieging looking like he wants to go for an attack, but I'm not sure I agree with this at all, especially going up this ramp. I think this is a big mistake. Okay, he does siege up before the Protoss really reacts, though, so Protoss still probably has to retreat here. Protoss not really reacting. Okay, finally sends units into attack. A flank it's coming too, in as well. It's too much. Look at too that flank. Too much stuff. Hang on, though. These Zealots getting on top of these tanks are going to do good damage. The mines all over the tanks as well. Dude, getting some decent drags. Look at that. A lot of tanks blowing up suddenly. So yes, the Protoss army gonna get cleaned up it looks like, but I mean that was not the kind of trade Terran wanted by any means. That D-Matrix kinda of, kinda of nice though. I mean, it, it's like you don't want this trade as Terran, but the fact that you're the one working towards your upgrades, that you got your base set up, I don't think this is that bad for Ball, because like 
he's going to start producing again, but it's still going to be this kind of core army. This is just going to buy you time for that 2-1. I'm surprised he made the move to attack before 2-1 finish, though. That kind of makes no yeah. sense to me. Look, we'll get into that. There are a lot of things about that attack that were not so great. Um, but his thing, Protoss can kind of just produce units and hurl them across the map, and Terran has to sit back and stabilize. He cannot continue this push. If he keeps sending little groups of units forward, he will he will get picked off one by one by little groups of Protoss as well. And look at that! The unit's getting into the third. These tanks just are trying to retreat here. Oh my god. I assume that was an easy <laughs> recall mine, but when Protoss was happy that mine was there. And I'm not gonna, not gonna be too sad about that one. Now, what I actually would have loved the way Ball's playing. Lots of bases he take took the top left forever ago, starting to work on the bottom right. Yeah. Really focus on this kind of gateway army. This should have been a speed shuttle game. This is oh, like yeah. screaming play speed shuttles. <laughs> Definitely. And like the way that Terran army was coming up the ramp, you can imagine what the storms could have been like. Man, this zealot's still going. Someone stop him! Oh my god. Nah, let him go. Oh my he's got to run free. He's got to run free. 12 kills. He has, he's, he's reached at 26 health on shields while he's killing everything. Dude, this is like the carbon <laughs> zealot just getting in there fighting the whole world. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Giving kills the turret. These poor SCVs are like just running around. They don't even know what to do. Someone stop this guy. A few zealots coming up. Oh, mind drag onto the vultures a little bit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Do you see that mind drag? That was so yeah, that was that was that was terrible for Ball until it was fantastic for Ball. <laughs> it's like, that's what so quickly. TVP engagements always look like like they never look good for Protoss at first, unless it's like the whole Terran army was on siege or something. But yeah, the damage has been done. I mean, Flame Dream battered, but still going here, trying to lay some mines to defend this big ramp, which I think is definitely a great move. He's really got to worry about attacks through that avenue right now. He has managed to produce a whole lot of vultures right now. Even the tank count has been basically totally reset. There's only like eight tanks on the map right now. Trying to send forward a small group, which I think is just a big mistake. This is just going to be some free tanks for the Protoss, which he cannot afford to lose right now. The Zealots are trying to reinforce, but they are completely cut off. What is going on with these tanks? Oh my god, he didn't see anything up there. Does he not see the Zealot Swarm just waiting? Oh no. I mean, the Zealot Swarm has been waiting all over the map the entire game. This yeah. is all Ball has been doing, so... Very surprised to see it kind of move out. Fleet is going to try to go through the middle a bit as well. It's like they're just trying to get some space for these vultures, maybe to get mines, but it's not really doing the job you're looking for. You're losing all the muscle of these tanks because he's just not building enough of what you want. He has so much gas available, but it's just hard to get things going. Even having the D-Major the vulture just to have something to try and defend this fort. Yeah, well, Ashbull will very kindly compensating Terran for the loss of those tanks by running into all those mines there. Um, it's going to help Terran come back a little bit, but uh, they still need your donations. There's a link in chat. Uh, just 50 cents will uh, <laughs> we'll buy uh, like seven more vultures. Um, but look, Protoss able to big, the pressure on. Yeah. Big oh. move towards the natural. This, if he clears out all those mines, like this is going to be great. Cut off all the reinforcements. My flint has got to re-secure that whole area. Oh. They got so much stuff up at the top left, but at this point, Ball can lose these bases. It ain't really going to matter that much. They're working towards the production. So many goons still alive here and killing things as they're rallied. There's no defense back at all. Where is the Terran army? Oh, it's attacking, of course. Because why would he it's defend attacking. when his main is under threat? Um, it's going to kill his fourth, no problem, but like, does Protoss even care? Protoss is literally no. in the main right now and he has a clear path of reinforcements to get there. So Terran can, Terran can kill what they like, but I think this game is over. Yeah, they, like recovering from this spot here is just so hard as uh, dirt. So I have no idea. Did, that that did a little bit of damage, but it, the cost was way too big. You can see, Paul's not even trying to kill the natural. Just go straight for the production and make sure the reinforcements aren't going to be able to get anything done. Well, we'll see if uh, Fleeting Dream tries to bring anything back or what his plan is here. Ooh, is Zealous up at the fourth. So Paul's still oh. being very active with these little tiny hit squads. Yeah, no. This is uh, this is, is, this, is this the GG. most annoying? Yeah, GG. Is that the most annoying kind of Protoss to play against? <laughs> no, not really, because if you figure out what they're doing, it, it, and it suits my play style very well, where you literally just sit on your ass until they're out of money. Like, because <laughs> you, you just max and you just wait for them to attack, and there's nothing they can really do about it. Because they have no way of getting around your, like, set defense, right? They have no recalls, they don't even have drops, they have no carriers, so you just build the defense and wait for them to come, basically. You know, I, you know what, I, I think I want to call that style of Protoss, like World War One Protoss. They don't have any hope of success, the defenses are too strong, but they attack anyway. And they just keep hurling the boys in. 
the, the power of heart and belief will carry you through. Yeah, that's right, that's right. The heart of the cards, Protoss. Um, See, I like, play, I like playing that kind of style, but I get Templars and Storm very quickly. I go into drops the best I can. Like, I use the mobility to kind of pe like get some stuff going. Not just building up this, this StarCraft 2 looking army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, in the next game, we have Light Swarm back in the top right, in the red, and Ash Ball down here in the blue. Perfect colors. Who even needs top versus bottom? They've done it themselves. They can play whatever game mode they like if they're going to do this. So you're you're right. Speaking of colors, Nublime, right? Let's talk mm. about colors, Nublime. Look, <laughs> I just I told you all my reasons. Okay, I wasn't telling you the reasons I lost. I was telling you the reasons I didn't set the colors. <laughs> I was exhausted. I don't know. I, I just... I have, like... Because I'm not good about setting time versus bottom, but I purposely pick colors that aren't going to match. Look, I went random. It was Exit who picked the color. Well, I don't even know that. He probably went random too. I didn't notice. I just want to blame anyone but me. Yes, yeah, so, so, yeah, so don't go random. Like, fine. Like, come on. Don't you have a favorite color? Pick your favorite color. I mean, I don't know. Seems kind of try hard to pick colors. <laughs> Seems kind of try... It's, it's, you're trying harder to defend your choice of random when it gets you into trouble. <laughs> yeah. Random for life. Look, man, if I could play random in Brood War, I probably could, but it's too hard. What race do you struggle with the most? Because I assume it's probably Protoss, right? Because you got your Nightpool speech, your Zerg set. Well, it's kind of like the quote unquote hardest matchup for each race I struggle with. Like, you know, I struggle with TVP, PBZ, and ZBT. Like, all, all, all three I just can't do. Hmm. Uh, similar opening from Light Swarm this game, the Overpool, the Classic, the Safety, and Ball on Eclipse, this madman. Oh is he going Nexus first? He absolutely <laughs> is. What a, what a beast. Look, while we've got some downtime in this game, because the links aren't going to come across, let's just talk quickly about last game, because I said I want to talk about that push, so... Yeah. In the first place, like you pointed out, wasn't anti-timing. I feel like that's the surface level issue with that, but then you have the kind of strategic level issue of all Protoss is doing pairing up on Zealot Goon. So the longer you wait, the worse their army scales. And like they're kind of at their peak moment where like, you know, they've been able to pretty much max and you don't really have your upgrades yet. And that's the moment he chose to attack. And also, attacking through the middle of the map on Eclipse is almost never going to succeed. Because first you have to go up one ramp, down again, up another ramp, and Protoss has a huge counter-attack path the whole time. So it Anytime Terran's coming up that big ramp to attack Protoss, I feel like they're probably doomed, no matter what the situation is, really. Maybe against carriers, that's probably the only time it really works. Yeah, no, I could... Like, that's a lot of things I was seeing, too. It's just also... When you're planning to do later, it's not like he went, like, five factories nice and early trying to, like, really get in there. It's like, why are you oh, unseating, nice. getting out of position? Yeah, can't get in there, can't get the scouting info. But, I mean, at least you have an idea off the hatchery time and nothing's crazy weirder. And Ball, like, does only see four lanes. In fact, they're chilling at home, not testing the waters. So, like, this overall is going to get here and be like, you fucking what, mate, with this Nexus? <laughs> <laughs> Man, ball, I guess he's a baller, you could say. Getting this next Hey, Hey, got him. That's that's, uh, that's a pretty great move, honestly, because, you know, sometimes you just get the feeling you can kind of guess what your opponent's going to do. And you're just like, well, he's not going to nine pull me on this map. The, the, the Nexus first is fun. Because it's, like, especially, not, not that these guys are doing it, but, like, if I ever just throw out a Nexus first match, I'd be like, well, either I die or it's awesome and there's no in between. <laughs> People in chat saying that gateway is off, off placement. Is that right? It doesn't. Uh, is it? Uh, it looks right no, to me. It it looks. It looks all right. Correct. Maybe he tested it later. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, but he is going for that. All right. I need a, I need a, a rhyme just for light swarm. Uh, the rhymes of swarm. We gotta think about it. It's too high. I definitely get that. There's a lot more concave to oh, like, poke at it later, Is that what but he means? Oh, okay. I, I, I don't think it, I don't think it's too like too far to the because I think you want it to be in line with the your right, porch. Surely it is. No, are you telling me that this is a whole tile worth? Because it does not look like it. Like no, that's not a tile. That's not it's a tile. Not. It's straight up not right. I'm sorry, white kid, but this is what this is what Starcraft looks like. I'm sorry, but that, like, you know, a, a ghost can't fit through there, I don't think. Okay, maybe a ghost can, I don't know. Yeah, it might you know. not be tile to the right, but there's not, like, an, a tile gap. <laughs> oh, okay, I see your point. Yeah, okay, maybe. Maybe if it was down here, it'd be tight. Surely it still is, though. I mean, come on. I really want someone to test this now and put this to bed, because now I'm doubting it, too. 
Uh, no, well, brutal.com, get all your walling tight. needs. Get all your... So, would it need to have been down here? Is that why it's not tight, or what? Do you... not ask me walling questions. You know better than this. But you're a Protoss player! Light Swarm says, <laughs> pretty sure it's tight. Light Swarm, I hope you sent your links, because we're never going to know, are we? If probes get pulled, we'll know. Now, this is the... So, ignoring the shenanigans of this wall. We'll find out eventually. Okay, if the game Ball? slows down, I Building just want to say, look. just so you know. Yeah, that's fine. So look at Baldo immediately getting this goon. Lightworm didn't go further in with his overlord. Did not see this as Citadel first. Surely this goon points to Citadel though, or like you know something. It crazy should. Like oh my though. God! Kill it, please! Uh, don't let it walk okay, away. Okay, thank God, thank God. <laughs> that was close. Oh my God! Shoot it! What is that? What is that? <laughs> that overlord was so close to getting away without goon range here. That thing is literally like a clunky marine. That's the range it has. So. That, go that overlord almost escaped. That would have been the worst thing ever. So, Hydras are out, by the way, as expected. There's three-edge Hydra going ahead. Well, there's a single goon to try and defend. Now, he's going up to four gates immediately, which is the normal Citadel follow-up, and you can just produce enough speed zealots to survive here, right? Well, it depends on how aggressive Lightsword wants to be with these, because that, that can's pretty far back. He, has, he doesn't have to wait for range to kind of work on these building. Did, did you see that zealot? Can, can he go out there? Is it real? Okay, well, we're never gonna fucking know. Great, I'm, I'm so happy. Thanks, Light Swarm. God damn it. Yeah, no, but like, look, look at this though. Because of how far those cans are back, he's gonna be able to kill the forge. That upgrade's not gonna finish. Yeah. He's gonna have to make a new forge in the main. And if only two oh, cans are here, too late. yeah, he hasn't made any more cannons. Yeah. Is this game just gonna end? I mean, the zealots, but you can kind of just kite those once all the cannons are gone. Single Ling just doing its work on that cannon. And yeah, now he just has to micro these zealots. He does need more hydras here. But we're on the way slowly. Although Light Swarm's macro really dropping off here. Oh man, anytime you see three lava morphing at once, you know they're basically screwed up. Um, <laughs> so honestly, the stream of Hydra stopped and this is a big issue. Now this counterattack actually has a lot of weight to it. Now, uh, he did not make another forge yet, so that's actually pylons being built. Is that just to intimidate the Zerg? Like, is he actually just trying to fool him with those? Like... No, look at, look at Ball Supply because he has oh, all the gateways. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Why at the natural though? Anyway, these speed slots gonna come in here. That's probably enough hydras. It looks like with a few more hatching, I think Zerg will hold this off. And uh, honestly, Bolt mm -hmm. probably shouldn't be trying to lose all the speed slots doing this. Yeah, honestly, this is gonna be a problem because let's say even this doesn't go through. Plus one got killed off the fort. Lings will actually be very mm -hmm. helpful in free force of defense if he needed to. Oh, but the zealots in the third can pick off these three drones. Oh, the drone's escaping. Oh, doesn't lose one. Nice you don't keep those two alive though. But now it's actually to clean this up. Damage continuing to go down. Protoss is really in a desperate position though. They have to keep the Zerg at arm's length, or they will die instantly here. Well, they ignore the die. Look at what unit they have not made forever. 19 probes. Like they have given up on oh. any kind of follow-up in this. As you said, thank thanks, Caster. Hey, hey, if that's the caster curse I bring to the table, I will welcome that. True, no true. problem. Just just cast your teammates as they play live, and they're like, oh no, he stopped making probes, and then they'll start again. <laughs> um, but see, this is the thing, the Hydra's coming across. Like I was saying, Protoss had to keep the Zerg at arm's length, and he's screwing up keeping the Zealots in here. The only way he could have survived is just having his Zealots in the drone line constantly keeping the Hydra's back. But now with no cannons, and only a handful of Zealots, I think Protoss is about to die here. Is that enough Hydras, though? That's a fair amount no. of force. Like, the Zealots are not going to be enough to defend this. Reinforcers might come up, but Lake Swarm has the initiative. He wants to kind of poke through. One's getting baited out. Yeah. going to try to engage. There's so many Hydras, and Reinforcers coming. That's my the, too. Yeah. I think this is just going to be enough. Not going to be able to add on. Even, like, this forge not going to be finished. Can't add cans to emergency fix this. Yeah, no, this is over. This is over. Lake Swarm's going to kill us natural. I mean, it doesn't really matter what happens after that. GG. Smiley face. You're like, GG, I'm going to have my revenge, haha. -ha. Well, I think you know what you did with doing like, such an <laughs> all-in build. Like, that's like, GG, you did it, finger guns. Excuse like, me. ah. Protoss went Nexus first and then stopped building at 19 probes, and you're like, oh, Zerg's just so all in. What? No, I said, uh, no, I meant the Protoss was all in. Oh, right. Because he stopped making oh, okay. probes. <laughs> I, I just assumed you were talking about the Zerg. Listen, I, I will talk shit on Zerg all the time, but occasionally I'll give them credit. Like, listen, there there's adepts to my hatred, but it's not bottomless. It's there. Like, we can find things to talk about that are good about Zerg. Yeah, yeah. I'm, honestly, muter, muter, muters are cool. Muters are cool. Okay, you know, you're not <laughs> complaining when they're like in your probe line? 
I mean, I am, but they're cool. <laughs> it's a lot more cool than losing the Hydras. <laughs> Alright, you hear that Terran soundtrack, you know it's going to be a good match. In the top right, in the blue, we have D-Booties. And the bottom left. In the yellow, we have My Fleeting Dream. We can see they went with uh, UMS here. Get that reminder of Vladius the map maker. So, TVP once again. Now, I want to see if My Fleeting Dream has learned from his mistake. That said, there is no guarantee that these games are in Chrono Launch order whatsoever, so he might he might make even worse mistakes that he's learned from in that other game. <laughs> Anything can happen. DBD says you opened up stream and that's still at work. Well, that's alright. Uh, yeah, you can go and watch the VOD DBDs. It's available. Yeah, or you can just uh, listen to StarCraft play-by-play -play style. I still do that all the time. <laughs> Mm, it sounds interesting. It would depend on the casters, right? If that really worked. Yeah, I mean it's usually like ASL, so you know, Tezos mm -hmm. gets the job done. That's actually how I, that like so, a lot of the times I do like intermittent fasting, so I don't like eat lunch. So my lunch break is I go in my car and I like take a little power nap while I'm listening to StarCraft Two. That's how I stay up on GSL. <laughs> how can you sleep at the same time as listening to it though? That I don't. Well, it does. It's a power nap. Like eyes are closed, but you're aware. Like I'm not. If I fall asleep in my car, I will like be late for work at a lunch. They'll be like, "What are you doing? Are you drunk right now?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. Man, I haven't watched GSL in a long time. Okay, this probe coming up, by the way, and it's Eclipse. You, you know what's gonna happen. Do I even need yeah, to pass yeah. this? Do I need to say anything here? I'm just gonna take a break, alright, Seed Zero. Let's let's just go take a five minute break, because we've seen this before. It's gas steel on Eclipse. If you played ladder, you I, know you know how common this is. Okay, so I need to like let's not we don't have to dwell on that this is possible, because it is possible. It's possible on butter too, so you know. Yeah. Like, we might be seeing right. a lot of this season. Glad that that's now, coming up now. Huh? Now he uh, just you're the Terran here, this has happened to you. Do is it better in your opinion to just not have the gas, go for the gas expansion with the bunker, and just like, okay, I'll deal with it later? Or, like, do you, like, just your build is slow, but you stick to your guns? I think it's much better to just throw down a second barracks right away. And so, there's two possibilities. Protoss is expanding, in which case go across and kill it. Protoss is not expanding, in which case fine, you just expand yourself a little later and you're not behind. That's my take on it. Um, the thing is, if you know exactly what Protoss is doing behind it, it becomes much easier, right? If you know they're proxying, for example, obviously second barracks is far and away the best option. Um, and look at that, he's putting down PB block as well, because he's uh, trying to slow down the Protoss expansion. Um, if you know that they're doing kind of like a normal opening with gas, going ahead with the gas expand is really good. Um, it's totally fine. And, and looks like uh, Protoss did want to get a Nexus here, but is not aware of the CB block going down, so actually he's really going to be kind of screwed up here, probably even more than the Terran is. Because look at how much money he's banked up that he will not be able to spend. Has not taken his gas still. You can steal the Terran's yeah. gas, but you've stolen your own in reality. <laughs> yeah, this is not exactly what you oh, want to be seeing here. This is actually so devastating for Protoss. I'm kind of, I'm kind of blown away by how much this is screwing up Protoss. He finally takes his gas, but honestly, Terran's in a great position. As long as he gets his bunker up or whatever, he, he'll be fine. Okay, that doesn't do anything, my dude. Like, A, the Marines are going to kill this pretty quickly, and B, Terran can just build it next to that and float it a couple minutes later. Like, floating at two <laughs> tiles is not a big deal, to be honest. Oh, uh, the booties in chat, I'll do them often. That's the CPL, the the wide world of unpracticed builds. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what CPL is, isn't it? People play games and they're like, oh, I don't know this map or something. <laughs> Honestly, that's most games in CPL. That, that, that's the people go back in time with me to the year 2003. Way back in time. You guys still here, you go 2 gate goon, 10 15 after, or like it did get the 2 gates real up, quick. And, uh, Clean Dream, not really paying attention. Okay, no, he is. Micro is away. Nicely done. I was gonna say, I'm surprised he didn't build a bunker, but if you micro, four marines are fine for this. I'm surprised DBDs did not bring up the second zealot there, because two zealots definitely crushes four marines. Opting not to attack, this might be a mistake. Man, I feel like DBDs really missing his only opportunity to, to counter what Terran's done here. Um, and this is gonna be a big issue. Is that a goon? No, it's a third zealot. Man, he needs a bunker like yesterday, though. Holy crap. Oh, he's not gonna build it! Oh my god, this is about to go so wrong for Terran. Or, or I don't know, is getting distracted though, just buying all this extra time. Oh my god, these zealots are like dogs chasing a car. They're just like, oh, what's that? Oh, no, back to work. Still no bunker, he's making another marine, so he realizes he's in danger. But I question this response. Oh my god, 
He's gonna start building up, but the zealots are already here. That marine just stops. They stare at each other for a second. Did you see that? <laughs> They're kind of just like, oh. Oh, okay. Doesn't need to be the block, which, you know, it gets in a pretty good position. But yeah, how do you fight this? As, as Vulture coming out, so the time this is gonna take is limited, but it's already disrupting Terran significantly. Oh my god. Oh no, the transferred workers! <laughs> I think it's a pull to fight. I don't think it's meant to be a transfer. Uh, I guess Ooh. so. It I feel think like it. Really needs to go for SMEC. If you hang around, the vulture's gonna pop you and be deflected. And actually, it looks like Fling Dream gonna be fine here. Actually, deflects it without losing, as far as I could tell, a single unit. Ooh, I like this though. The one vulture immediately two machine chops. I wonder Ooh. if like you make use of these marines getting ready for a couple tanks oh to just my push God. across Build and please lose. Please, Build the bunker. <laughs> He's leaving with the vulture, so the Delts just like, alright then, I guess we're coming back. And now, now he's starting to take the damage. If he just had a bunker, this wouldn't be happening. You'd easily just block the Zealot path with the SCVs and that's that. Yeah, but then the game would be less fun. It'd be less interesting. Okay, double tank production on the way, the which is the normal follow-up of this. Um, but yeah, this one vulture could cause some mischief. Look at that, the guarding green leaves, but he's going to the third. Okay, finally he's building a bunker. See, he just had to wait for that fifth marine to die, so no marines would feel left out. <laughs> oh, but look at this, yeah, I'd rather feel left out than dead. Oh my god. Oh no, Terran's in so much trouble right now. The tanks are going to pop out in just a minute, but with three zealots here, I think a lot of damage is still going to go down. Look at that, SCV's starting to fall again. Protoss will ahead on workers now after all this has happened. Yeah, still, this is like two tanks have popped out. This is not going to get the job done. It's annoying the amount of damage Fleet Dream has taken, but he will eventually Ooh, stabilize. That gets it, Nicely done by Terran. It, but look behind this, Starport's already on the way. Ooh, okay. That could definitely do something here. Um, now what happened to that vulture I didn't see, did it, I don't think it killed any pros, at least it didn't kill many based on the count, I think it just ran in and died unfortunately. No. Um, yeah, yeah. But look, Terran is well behind from where they could have been if they just made a bunker. That's all they had to do. <laughs> well, this is the Blime's big message, don't, don't let friends not build bunkers, it's like, don't try to cut that it's corner. <laughs> Why'd you kid, he only has 700 minerals, no minerals for bunker. True, he's got to save his investments, you know, he's earning interest on those minerals. All, all, I'm just, I'm remembering, every time Y2 Kid says something snarky like that, I'm remembering, when we ever cast him, I'm gonna be on his ass about his macro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember. When are we, when are we casting these games? Oh, this barracks <laughs> though, man, this isn't StarCraft 2 out here, you can't be floating this barracks out. I guess it's the factory you float in StarCraft 2, but nonetheless, if he loses that, that sucks for Terran, and like, Protoss is determined to get it, he's not he's not giving up on this. Honestly, this this push, this back CC back push is kind of scary, but given he's invested in the starport, I'm not really sure if this makes sense. Protoss should kind of have enough, and look at that, he's picking off the vultures very well. Very nice micro from Protoss here, really crushing this push so far. The barracks is saved, and yet it still charges headlong into danger. My god. This is a weird game. Like, the spot we're in, like, at, at like an eagle's eye glance at the game, like, things don't look bad. It's like, oh, look, third base is on the way, Robo Observers, like, here's the push from Terran. Like, oh, things no. kind of make sense, but it's just the actual action happening. I'm Terran very is confused. Terran's turning right now, or he's going to get crushed here. As long as Protoss finds their courage. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was going to say. Okay, looks like he will be able to turn back and run back to his mines. But this is very dicey for Terran still. Like, if there's mines somehow get cleared... Okay, finally was kind of repairing this barracks. If there's mines somehow get cleared, <laughs> suddenly these tanks are in a lot of danger. And look at this. The third did go up. Oh, the pros, why'd they have to leave? They were safe. They were safe. Oh, <laughs> did you see Protoss was like, I'm going to go over there. Wait a minute, there's probably mines. And barely didn't get blown up. See, that mine no, could have hit my them. entire army and done huge damage. Now, Flea and B back at home is working on a third CC, starting to add on a couple more factories. So, Whoa. very light, given how these attacks have not done the damage you're really looking for. It's, it feels a little risky. It feels like the booties, if they kind of geared up for an attack a little bit later from now, they might be able to do some pretty big damage. Cold Warp Gates came through with the gateway info. It is confirmed not tight to Ling as well. Yeah, so yeah, there was a picture from Y2K, it's not tight to probes and so either. Okay, fair enough. It just, it just, it just didn't look, it looked weird. So it's is there it's a like, whole tile gap? Because it really doesn't look like you could move it over anymore. Like, it looks like you would not be allowed to build it, or is it actually a whole tile? I'm, I'm not sure. I, again, I am never the person to ask for walling stuff. This is why, part, this is part of why I'm bad at that matchup. <laughs> What um, we do, Did they die? Oh, they're in the dropship. No, they're, all, they're in the dropship. Yeah, I was going to say, look, look at the bottom. Look at this cheeky dude flying across the map. Yeah, you know, Terran has accomplished what they pushed. The Observer kind of stayed with the army, so he's caught unawares. His barracks is still going to die, by the way. 
that barracks is not going to live. Um, but, hey, look, uh, look at look at what the booties is doing. When the game goes weird and you don't know what your plan is, <laughs> that's what you do. Air nice. weapons on the way. This is my guy, dude. Stargate on the way too, but look, this drop is going to come down. No cannons here. A few zealots to try and distract. This actually might be very helpful, but let's see if Protoss' reaction is. Suddenly, so far none. Okay, the probe is pulled, but they're really just going to another danger. Okay, pulls them both, but I mean, at, at the end of the day, they're just going to swap sides and still both be dying. Okay, it looks like Protoss is going to clean this up without too much hassle, because... Terran really did not use those launches to their utmost, I have to say. Uh, yeah, imagine we kept one or two for that third base. <laughs> imagine you dropped them all in the third base, set up a bunch of mines. Protoss has to either lose a bunch of zealots or risk losing the Nexus. And look at that, he just lift off some more. Well, well, Forge me on off. the way, so then... I, there's, there's, technically, there's... I spoke the truth. He lifted them off and just didn't do anything else. <laughs> They're still in the dropship. Once. This is silly. I don't know if you guys can tell, that... but this game is really stressing me out. <laughs> like, honestly. So are, are either of these players on your team, so you can yell at them? <laughs> no, they are not. Unless I missed Fleeting Dream. Hang on, now I'm going to check now. I'm like, hang on a minute. But look at this, the dropship just standing here. Oh boy. Oh my god. Okay, I thought it was going to get out for a second. Now, where was the Fleet Beacon? He didn't actually see the Fleet Beacon, but he did see the Stargate. Actually, would he have seen it when he dropped before? I don't think it had started. He would have seen the Stargate, no, it, so Terran should he, have... He, he saw the side of record blinking when he flew, flew into the main, for sure. But that's a bit harder to notice. He might not have noticed it in the excitement of the drop. Honestly, I've done that exact thing, so... I don't want to say for sure he knows his carrier, especially since he's, like, not making any Goliaths or anything. Although, it is a bit early for that, I suppose. Another dropship across the right side. This one has a tank this time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see I if this drop goes tanks. any better. There's so many zealots in that natural mineral line. That's not the place. <laughs> just keep flying. <laughs> just, just donates one vulture to distract the goons. It actually works somehow. I don't know how that worked, but okay, the dropship gets to get away. Well, let's see. Did the barracks die, by the way, or did it fly all the way back to the third? That is the same barracks back at the third, right? It looks like it. I believe yeah. so. <laughs> well. Somehow that barrack survived. I don't really understand how, but there you go. Man, yeah. that's a lot okay. of Zelly Goon though. And honestly, Terran has enough tanks, but it's hard to defend the entire stretch of the third. And the Wiz is working towards carriers, adding on some extra production. We're working on some of these upgrades as well. And I think Fleeting Dream, they, may, they probably feel a little like extra safe, right? You're on three bases. You're not really being messed with when you flew in the base. You didn't see Arbiter attack or anything on the way. They're probably feeling pretty safe, but if they didn't pay attention to that uh, carrier transition, it could be pretty troublesome. Another <laughs> drop up at the 12. going to stop this fourth base attempt, but Taboo's got so much armor here. How come there's only one Vulture in there? Only one. Damn, those mines make that drop worth it. Holy crap. Wow, that was a lot of damage on the Protoss army there. Um... Mine's a good unit. I don't know if you guys knew, mine's are pretty good. I thought mine had no friends and they kill everybody. <laughs> That's also true. Look, I know some of you are out there still playing the single player campaign right now thinking Vultures are a bad unit, but let me tell you, hot take, Vulture's pretty good. The hot take, that is the freezer, like that <laughs> bag of frozen peas you are never going to eat, but you bought it thinking you're going to be healthier this time. No, no, no. Like that, sh that shit it's is like, ice cold. It's like this, this thing in a plastic bag, you can't tell what it is. You're not sure if it's like a loaf of bread or like a piece of fish that's been in there so long. <laughs> okay. Okay, these mines are giving me anxiety. There's no observer with this army, and he's laying more. But I guess if Protoss never moves out, it'll be fine. Going oh, down. Pro, pros, pros will eventually move out. Care. Dude, Terran has no idea. Start. Terran has no idea. He was scanning to see what units were coming out, seeing if an Arbiter was out or something like that, or seeing if Tempos are there. He might see it here. In fact, Carrie's going to come over and review themselves voluntarily, it looks like, just to help clean this up. Which, you know, I'm not sure if that's the move, because it looks like. Oh, okay, he would have seen the Fleet Beacon in the I suppose. Yeah, but maybe you don't notice that. It's all the way up in the corner. Yeah. You know, maybe he will not see it. Oh my god, how many units just died to mines when I wasn't looking? Oh, no. not, not as many as you think, but it's still a sizable chunk. I mean, they're still just mine. Oh yeah, they're all in the natural. Okay, I thought like all those units were gone. I was like, no, but they're just here in the natural. It's all good. And yeah, Protoss has done a good job keeping up with expansions. Now Terran taking that third while this is going on has been good as well. So his economy is okay. But now the carriers are out. Terran really needs to either like do some damage or take another expansion like very soon. And look at that, he does start another CC. Uh, Goliath's iron production, Goliath range on the way. He really did not know, by the way. I believe that's plus two on the way. Yes, it is. Protoss, meanwhile, yeah. no upgrades well, so... around. What has he got for carriers? I can't tell because they're building. Off we go. 
Well, I mean, there might Plus be an opportunity one. to do damage. They do have EMP Shockwave research, the vessels on the field building energy, so you get one good Shockwave and you get a couple rounds of Goliaths, there is an easy way to overstep this as to booty, so it has to be very careful. You can see that ground army with it is pretty intimidating, but there's still actually only two carriers. That doesn't yeah. do damage very fast. Two carriers can't even really, like, fight Goliaths, to be honest. They kind of, they kind of just victims. Um, so even with, like, what is this, five Goliaths, that's plenty for two carriers, like, for real. That's, that's enough. <laughs> Um, yeah, pl plus two arrows is about to finish, so that is a nice little spike, but gonna try to poke in just before it actually ends up happening. Look, the, done. Our, look at these protos grab the, the, the army oh is so, yeah, so split up. Oh. Pathing, please. Those goons were just move commanding in. That was horrible. <laughs> oh. Okay, looks like Tim's gonna clean up the protos here. That was devastating. Oh my god. Okay, four carriers, no, three carriers here now. Um, and DPD's spent all their money, so I, I mean, they're macroing well, I guess, but not the flip side, they can't build more. Oh my god, these carriers are really risking themselves right now. I didn't see any MP go down, but uh, their shields seem to have been depleted just by Goliath themselves. No, it has not been EMP, just taking a lot of damage, oh flying a little bit recklessly, not using the terrain as, as much as you would like to see here. But still, it is three carriers, you know, you can keep replenishing the interceptors, two more being built on the way. The Fleeing Dream now knows, like, for sure there is the investment, seeing them get replenished. And I think a lot of Goliaths here still has the ability to EMP. The Boots have to be very careful here. He's kind of getting these units stranded, but the Ground Army's not even trying to support them at all. Yeah, this is, uh... This is kind of a disaster for Protoss, not gonna lie. Like, these carriers not doing what they should have done. Does not quite pick off that carrier, but it's just a matter of time. Oh my god, shoot it! Shoot it! Oh my god, HP! Ah! Oh. There we go, finally goes down, two carriers go down at once, this Protoss ground army is just not enough, I mean, losing the lives too is not ideal for Terran, but it doesn't really matter, he's just crushing through right now. Now, it is hard for Terran to kind of be over at once right now, but it's certainly possible, as long as he can just keep the Protoss army on the run, keep it contained, and pick off these bases, he's going to win this game. The only problem is if uh, Protoss can kind of work out backstabs through the center, but there's so many mines, Terran ready for this, focusing those carriers again, only two left, and one of them's fresh battling the interceptors, mine's probably going to cause some trouble for Terran, but, ooh. They barely go off before Terran leaves the game. GG. Before Protoss leaves the game. Well, uh, Protoss left first, then Terran left, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> Terran won? I, I didn't like read yeah. that wrong and then Terran GG for no, no reason. I, I, like, that's the way I heard it. I'm like, no. Uh, but the Protoss won. <laughs> the Protoss lost. What are you talking about? Look, I'm being honest, that game was torturous because, like, units just kept dying <laughs> and I was like, ah. Oh. Oh my god, my Oh, C gone. CPL 8, the Blind Revenge Tour. <laughs> I had to play turn. Oh, it's gonna be great. <laughs> Alright, so that concludes all the games we have for Group 39. If your game wasn't in there, well, all I can say to you is if someone should upload it and it wasn't me, it's not my job. So, I'm sorry, <laughs> we didn't cast your game, it's not our fault. Um, so, we're gonna jump into some secret extra games now. Secret bonus double probation games? Okay. Yes, from week one, indeed. Yeah, NCX, I need a cast lock button for my job. I would be furious if I had a little shift all the time. Furious. <laughs> but is your job involved typing a lot of, like, block capitals? That's kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, just for formatting with everything. Okay, in the bottom right, in the yellow, we have Kinetic. And the top left in the orange, we have Kiko. Oh, that's, that's Kinetic. I was like... Yes. T T. I I had yeah. the intel from beforehand. So, another... Proud EMU Directorate member. Okay, nice. And we're week once is Polypoint, I believe? Yes, exactly. It's Polypoint. Here, a normal TBZ on Polypoint. But nothing's happening. Polypoint's such a regular board map, but nothing's going on at all. <laughs> right State Zero? Yeah, right, sure. There's nothing happening. <laughs> Nothing happening at all. Oh no, he built it, he built it. I missed it because I zoomed in on the lava. Five pool coming up. Oh my god. So. Mm, yeah. So, again, this is not the first time we've seen the Maniac Five Pool on Polypoid. Week one preseason. To test your skill as a player. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Who's being <laughs> tested? The Zerg or the Terran? I don't even know. So, yeah, <laughs> this is kind of dicey because you end up going cross position. And, uh, you know, Terran might scout you as well. On a two-player map, I kind of like it because it's like, well, you know where they are. Especially on Eclipse, say, you can send your lings around, like, the long path to kind of fool them. There's there's options, but 
Polypoid, a four-player map? I mean, I don't know. Did, Kin did Kinetic really just not want to play today? Like, was he like, you know what? I'm getting this over with. Screw this. Like, I mean, done. I'll, I'll be completely honest. If you told me in prison I was playing against Kiko, I'm probably cheddar cheesing it up, too. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Kiko is quite the monster. Yeah, I probably would but too Kinetic is good. Kinetic... <laughs> Kinetic is like able to fight something like this, so I am very surprised to see this be the choice. But we'll see. They're looking around. They're trying to find that scout. Oh, <laughs> is this Overlord going to catch it? Maybe. No, I don't think so. People in chat, by the way, saying the only reason you need caps is just super toxic on the Slack. You're raging at everyone. <laughs> like, why haven't you got this done yet? Why didn't you? No, it's it right for. Now? Okay, he no, does see. It's for, for auto caddy jerks. <laughs> oh, he sees it, but it looks like the SCV was coming out. Of the main, no, but he realizes, he realizes immediately that it's actually the top left. So props to Kinetic for that, knows the timings. The first green about to pop out, and Terran does not see the links, he went well past them. He is going to have no idea if these links are on top of the barracks, that's all you really need well, to do. Well, he knows now, knows now, two, two, he got reinforced, like, why is there two though? links? Okay, he did see, he did see it, yeah, you see those two links, and you're like, oh no. Okay, that marine taking some damage already, but... Theoretically, it doesn't need any HP if it just blocks the links, but the links slide on past their grease stuff and butter. <laughs> you know what it's like. I mean, it's it, it's yellow Zerg. That's the butter <laughs> Zerg. <laughs> That's right. They are ready for butter. action. Oh, that Marine's never going to make it. That little... Oh, it's a bunker. Okay. Okay, if he gets that bunker up, I mean, there's options for Terran. Yeah, look at that. Drill almost saves that Marine, but I guess there was no real hope for him anyway. Um, but now the SCVs kind of can't come through here and help out. They're kind of glitching over that bunker a little bit. How is he ever going to get a Marine to that bunker? Well, is this SCV going to attack the drones? I want to see that. Attack the drones. Oh, the, this is brutal. This is brutal. Dying so quickly. Yeah. yeah. You can see that Marine immediately pops off in danger. Oh. All, <laughs> all of them run away. He's The barracks not being repaired just yet. SCV's still trying to fight big supply lead for Kiko. So, well, so far, he's say, doing a pretty reasonable job. Yeah, he hasn't lost many SCVs. So, and Dirk has made zero drones. Look, he's repairing the empty bunker. <laughs> oh, the Marine gets out, but he cannot make it there. And Kiko's out of money now, and he hasn't been mining for a while. Look. Again, Kiko hasn't lost many SCBs yet, so until something actually happens, okay, GG. I guess he realized it was only a matter of time. What in the fuck? <laughs> so yeah, you guys like our secret bonus games? They were worth digging out, right? I just need to know: Did you grab these bonus games? Like, and he's like looked. It's like, oh, I heard something funny happens, or did you grab no, this I one at no random? Idea. And then like the replay said three minutes. You're like, oh, huh. Well, I did have to look at that check the time for the cast, so I kind of knew, but I kind of kind of try not to think about it, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm the same way. I gotcha. But look, I, I committed to doing the game before I knew. Oh, no. Yeah, we were gonna skip that one. If you were just like, oh, by the way, one of our bonus games I just on the cast, I'm like, we're not casting this game because there was a full pool, and uh, I don't know who won, but screw you guys, you don't get to see it. Alright, man, jump yeah, in. You have to subscribe. You have to subscribe to this Coach Pupil League on Twitch at to uh, at unlock. Three, by the way. Two one and two not going to do it for us, by the way. So here we are in another game. In the top right, in the white, we have Sony, and the bottom right in the magenta, we have Kinetic once again. Obviously, I just I, so up Kinetic's games. I got a theory mm -hmm. that Kinetic, that four-letter other account, that's his I just five pull every game account. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but actually, you know what? That might be it. So that means he's not five pulling today. Oh, he's already built six drones, so yeah, alright. <laughs> so far, 100% confirmed. NCX says he wants Sony to go Hydra as well. I don't know how this game goes. Oh my god, if you just lucked into it. Just imagine a world. It's like Christmas in March. <laughs> well, it seems like everyone's, everyone's trying to do it right now, so maybe I have to face the facts that it actually makes sense. I don't know. It's not as bad as you say it is. I know you hate it with a passion. It's just, I think the biggest part is when we've seen it in CPL. It's, people are doing it, and they're not playing to the advantage it gives you. Right. That's the biggest problem. It's like, it's good at certain things, you just have to play into them. Right, well, if we see Hydras, just know that I'm going to be constantly thinking, like, would Muniz have been better? And I'll say so if I think so. So watch out, players. I'll be judging you. Ooh, I bet they're scared. Their blind judgment. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sony going for a hatch first, by the way. Uh, interesting way to open it up. And we have the best build! Nine pool gas! Yeah, we'll see. Where does Sony put that? I'm still an advocate for most of these hatchery first. I liked them in the main, but we'll see if he does actually end up going for the natural. Looks like it isn't the main of my kind of player right here. Yeah, well, depressingly, if he's going Hydra, this is kind of the kind of thing you would do, so I'm kind of afraid, but <laughs> maybe he's just making links. 
Right. Well, also, it's, I mean, maybe just making links, but also, again, we see this nine pool coming. With, at, when you can consolidate a sunken if you need to, and all this kind of thing, you see spawning pool being made now. This is like, we'll see, ooh, gas behind it too. So, yeah, you got to get link speed. Uh, there's no way you can't yeah. get link speed here. Um, now, this is a pretty good advantage for Kinetic, getting this overlord in first, and Sony has no idea what build he's doing yet. Um, now, I don't think you'll ever be able to kill his hatchery, given this in base, but I think you can potentially come and harass the drones with your first six things. Because I think you should be able to get there before uh, Sony here can hold the ramp, I think. Uh, probably. Wait, he didn't go 12 hatch 12 pool, did he? Oh no, these things are just sitting home, I'm sad. So sad. Not, I'm not sure. I thought it was a limp pool, but honestly, I'm not sure. Well, it looks like... Okay, Kinetic is going to move out. He's waiting for the 6 or 8 now. Um, I, I, he's going to rely on taking straight to Mutalisk here. Now, the problem is if he does attack and he loses these Lings inefficiently, uh, Sony will just have way more Lings and come and counterattack and kill him probably. But if he just gets a few drones, it could be well worth it. Now, Lair coming up for Sony pretty quickly here as well. But Kinetic can have a big window where he can harass the Mutalisk. Dude, I just changed screens and I kind of had some whiplash because I was like, wait, is it the same base? Because it's still just a Zerg base. <laughs> now, th uh, thankfully, though, Overlord saw the lanes moving out, so if Melee gets the creep, it's the sun gets already being morphed here in the open. Okay, next season, so he's not going to try to dive in. He's not going to try risking these lanes, so he wants to be ready for that counter attack. With that super fast layer he's getting, he will just if he can just hold on for defense, these Mutas should be able to put some pressure on. Now, the question is going to be, with this lair being notably later than the opponent, do you give up and go for an Evo Chamber? I think you have to. I don't think there's any option not to. Now, if Sony can send Ling's to kinetic space and keep his initial mutilist back, he wouldn't have to. But I don't think that's really going to be an option here, because Kinetic has enough Ling's. I think he just hold off. In fact, he might have even still been in an attack here. Um, so I don't think there's any option to avoid an Evo Chamber. Like, his lair just finishing, but uh, Kinetic Spire is like two-thirds of the way done, so he's going to need one. There it goes. Wait, no, that's fine. Oh, Would have been pretty early if it wasn't even Jim. Yeah, I'm just thinking like back to the beginning. Like, you, but when you have your uh, like your scouting pass with that first Overlord, you usually go for the earliest natural. Like, I wonder like what the value is if Sony did a downward scout, so that way if your opponent sees you early, you see them early, or you're both playing blind rather than the chance that you, one player has all this information in advantage. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's match up. It's just like a, a matter of gambling, like you know, when you're trying to be sneaky and when you're when you're just trying to get the intel as best you can. Um, and, and yeah, but it's like you, like if, but we see this spot now. If you had some of these intel, you would know if you need that Evo Chamber or not. So right now, Sony has a lot of drones. He's going to be able to give up some, I think, to these mutas as the spire is finishing. But this is going to be a very weird game very soon. Yeah, he's not going to get the Evo Chamber, huh? I'm surprised by this. I really thought he would he would know, you know, what his opponent was doing, what timing he needs. Because, um, you know, these players, by the way, we've moved up a bit of a level from the games we're casting just now. These are like top tier zero players right here. Um, but maybe he knows something we don't, that it's worth it just sacrificing them instead. I don't know, isn't this game just over now? Because his units haven't even started. Yeah, well, I think, that, remember, there is also that other point. He's got two hatcheries, he's got the extra larva, C3 Scourge on the way. So, so he, uh, he might get matter? air advantage right afterwards. But I think the other part of it is, if you're playing in the dark and you're Sony, did you assume that, that, that it wasn't nine pool and the first gas was lair, not speed? I mean, I don't know, this looks pretty dire for Sony. Look at the Scourge, hatch. Ooh, run away. Okay. Where's this fourth Mutalisk? I don't know what happened to the fourth one. There was a fourth one somewhere. At least I thought there was. Am I... Oh, there it is. Okay, whatever it was doing. Yeah, yeah. Now, so, gonna attack with these Lings, but Kinetic's still with way more Lings here, actually. It also potentially puts some pressure on the foes. Um, I don't know where Kinetic thinks he's flying to, by the way. He's gonna have to micro against these at some point. I guess he's waiting for his reinforcements. Oh, he just lets them connect! Oh. <laughs> Honestly, that was yeah, not that... the most efficient for Sony anyway. I believe they only hit two Mutalisks between them. So... He, he killed two and almost killed a third. Oh, okay. He did hit three? Okay, yeah. Not bad, I guess. Oh, but you really want to spread them one scourge to a mutilus, so your own mutilus can finish them off real quick is the best way. And look at this. Kinetic yeah. is going to kill these enemy mutilus as well. Um, now we have the Evo Chamber coming up. Sony realizes it's kind of a bit too late that he actually needs this. Look at this Kinetic getting his moving shots. Oh, not quite. Looks like Sony will get away. What a missed opportunity from Kinetic there. If he stayed right on top of those Mutalists, he could have killed every single one. More Mutalists hatching going the wrong way, but honestly, could you just send a couple to, like, attack Sony's normal line again? Oh, oh that's so bad. Oh, this is so bad. Lose all these. 
Yeah, now Kinetic should be free to take his natural on. Like, how is how is Sony ever going to expand here? Kinetic just has more lings to begin with. He doesn't need to worry about that. And look at this. Kinetic coming for an attack. The spores will be done in time. Spores do build pretty quick. Yeah, this is going to be a rough situation. You can even see Kinetic's banking up a lot of gas in the, like right here. There's even overlords like by the base. Like, he's... I think Kinetic can get a lot of advantages whatever they want. They don't have to force their way into trying to fight their way through these spores or anything. Actually, do these spores cover the overlords hiding in the corner? <laughs> uh, no, I don't believe they do, especially if you came in at the top. But presumably your own mutalists <laughs> kind of take swipes and it'd be too hard for the uh, Kinetic's mutalists to like fight back without getting banged into the spores. So I think I think it's okay for it. So. Um, Ooh, he found the links on the map! Look at that overlord, that's the micro overlord, but it looked like it was freaking out. Like, go get him! That's funny. Oh my gosh, he's slaughtering those with the moving shot. Nicely done by Kinetic there. It always amazes me how good Meteor style against Lin is, because I would kind of think like, oh, you know, you only have a handful of Meteor how are they going to catch these fast units? But they actually really crush them. Well, especially if you don't get speed. Oh, the yeah, Sony is though. Look at this. His Meteor's coming yeah. for the drones. But honestly, this might be bad for Sony if he gets caught. Okay, he kills nothing and backs out. So I guess at least it wasn't a downside. Oh, but he's going to get caught here. Kinetic's so close. Starts getting that moving shot. Oh my gosh, he's gonna get a Mutalist for free here, at least. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah, so Kinetic is real. Kinetic is really good at this moving shot stuff. Yes. And I like the strategic decision we've seen here. Getting the expansion, that's obvious, of course. Yeah. But also getting air armor Ooh. for his Mutalist. That yeah, is a like great it. decision. Yeah, I like that a lot too, actually. That makes a lot of sense. Now look, Danny can hit the gas! The gas is not covered! Now, that oh, is no. what I was saying. Sony can sort of swipe the Kinetic's Mutalist, and it's hard for Kinetic to engage without just getting baited into spores. But this is still very threatening for the Sony here. Is he going to be able to hold this gas? If this gas goes down, he's in a world of hurt. Not only is another 100 minerals you have to pay, it's also like your gas income being disrupted for that much longer. In fact, he's, he really wants it. He's not giving up. How many Mutalists does he even have here? Seven Mutalists, four of uh, Sony. So it's enough for Sony that he, he can take a fight easily with a little help from the spores. But this gas yeah, look what Sony's doing though. Build up a lot of links. Overlord does see it from Kinetic, so he does know what's going on now. Ooh, big air fight up at the top here. Still so many immunes for Kinetic. Disadvantage not going away. Scourge do try to connect and get their hits, but it's not spread out as much as you want. Sony is trying for that counterattack. Does have a slight lane van. Going for an upgrade on these links as well, but that's very far away from finishing. But still, clears up these ground forces. Kinetic has to spawn some immunes. This will be enough to help with the defense here. But still, like, I like that Sony's trying these things, I just don't think these moves are ever going to be enough. The situation is just a little too bad. It does not seem like it, especially with Sony's gas actually going down ultimately. He didn't kill a drone there, did he? Um, Kinetic could afford to make a few more drones here, you know, if he's starting through right now. And obviously, a sunken wouldn't be a bad investment either. Sony! What the... Yeah, the BM left side of the map is like, oh, oh we, what we the hell? Play, we're, we're gonna play a long game. Actually, I do actually kind of... There's, so there's a lot of minerals, right? There's a lot of minerals built up. I don't mind this is because if your opponent is in your base seeing if you're making all lengths, this might be that Hail Mary, maybe they don't see this coming kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I guess what else are you going to try and do here is Sony. It's, it's a good idea, honestly. Um, but I do imagine that Kinetic will actually just smash through these spores if he does not make a whole bunch more. Uh, and at some point, you know, you're going to see like six spores in this base and think, okay, like, why are you still in this game? There must be something going on, right? Um, look, I don't know, assuming that's how Kinetic goes with this. Looks like he's going to try and take a third base of his own, um, which is fine. But I still think just building up Mutalisks is the way to go for Kinetic. Because once you have like 30 Mutalisks or whatever, spores don't really matter that much unless you have a whole bunch. Ooh, you Kinetic get into the advantage of let's go on the left side of the map and build some bases. <laughs> Drones going over to the <laughs> left side so popular. Look at that. Sony getting out here. Oh, look at these Scourge. They barely see those Mutalists, but I don't think Kinetic saw them. Sony wisely does not chase them. He's, he's looking. He's looking. Honestly, killing that would be so bad when you think your opponent's on one base. But look look at this freaking army from Kinetic. 12 Mutas plus one armor has been finished, still adding on more. And even throwing some links up at Sony's ah, base. Ah, plus one melee upgrade. Up. Finally, yep. these links of Sony are getting superior. With the Scourge taking out Nodeward there at least, so they didn't get wasted. Um, I yeah. mean, did, are these links superior? They flew into a full freaking fun pack of Mutas. They are dying so quickly. They might get one drone, but they see more Mutas popping over a control group now. One Sony, drone, again, say? trying... Two drones looks like to me, and honestly, I think that was worth it for Sony. 
Um, he's not spending any gas here, and look, he's setting another attack. I really want to see Kinetic get a Sunken or two. Like, I think it would be worth it, the number of minerals he has. And he's just hatching more drones, of course, and he can defend this. But it's giving Sony the map control, which gives him a lot of opportunities. Um, and that's the issue here. Yeah, I just don't... Is there a critical number where it's, like, this many mutas, like, you can plow through spores a lot more effectively, like, two or three swipes or well, something? it obviously is... depends how many mutalists Sony has, and if it's even a vaguely even mutalist fight, the spores make a lot of difference. I don't know if you're casting it with me. Do you remember Beckerel vs. Packrat from uh, last season? Not particularly. A very intense CBC series where, um, one game, Beckerel had, like... Like, I don't know, like 15 more mutalists than his opponent, but his opponent had like two spores, and the uh, pack rat actually won the game because the mutalist came and attacked over the spores, and he actually just the mutalist just disappeared. So you have yeah, to be careful. Yeah, no, the no, I'm not saying for like the straight up fight, I'm talking for like a counter attack trying to get some big damage. Oh, Here comes the attack at the map. Oh my god, these lings, they're gonna do huge damage in here. The spy might go down actually. And yeah, these mutalists scrambling to defend it, we're flying right over the links, hitting the natural. If that natural hatch dies, that's a huge deal. And look at that. These drones forced to be pulled. Okay, looks like the mutalists will save the natural hatch. Like I say, I'd love to see a sunken or two from Kinetic. It really would make sense at this point. So many drones falling! What did I miss? I looked at the natural for one second and all the drones getting splattered there. What just happened? And look at this, these bases coming online for Sony now. Mutalists trying to harass, but honestly, they might just die. That might have been the only misplay they're seeing here from Sony, but it does buy time for more links to come in. Oh. Yeah. Nice done. Yeah, actually, you know what would have been really nice for Kinetic in these spots? Mm -hmm. it, like, you're pretty late now. Why don't you research Burrow to save your oh, links, save your drones? You know, I wonder why <laughs> we don't ever see that in CBZ, because it could be huge if you... I mean, it is a one whole meter, of course, but once you have two bases, I guess it's not that big a deal. And yeah, suppose your opponent comes for, like, a backstab or something like that. Yeah, that does seem pretty good, huh? Because it's not like your opponent's going to have an overlord in your base once Mutalists are out. But look at the drone count yeah. right now, by the way. Sony at 28. Now, still with the far, far, far inferior Air Force, but the economy far better. So What, what you said far, I saw seven meters in production. He's mining gas from three bases. Yeah, so that is not going to stay Fioria for too long. Kinetic like, has that like 22 Mutalists out here. I mean, okay, obviously he cannot fight over these spores. There's no way that's going to end victory. And look at that, Kinetic leaving half his Mutalists behind. I think realizing the wing backstabs are not going to stop. Just try and pick off what he can. Yeah, and with three gas, he can produce an awful lot of Scourge, huh? And you can't exactly micro more than one control group against Scourge. That's not really going to work out. I'd say, if you can press them all in one place, can they kind of have that Corsair effect where they just kill any Scourge and try and come close? I believe there will be a point where that it does come true. But we saw this in the this was this this easy I remember from last season as there looks like these mules are gonna poke it to the main. I remember someone building a lot of skirt, and that was a game deciding thing. Like there's like ten more mutas for one player, but like over a control group of scourge and they just like flew around, the scourge got great hits, and it actually won for the person with less mutas, because scourge it's like it's a one desperation move, but if it hits well, it's so powerful. Yeah, we actually see this in pro games fairly commonly as well. Oh my god, look at this. This drone coming down to the bottom left. Oh, the fact it's a drone scouting might actually give away the fact that there's bases out there. And look at this, he's Kinetic's third. Both players are from thirds here. Now, what's the upgrades for Kinetic here? So, he only Sony in the main. Oh, I didn't even see that. Oh, he's ready. He's ready for the attack. The Scourge come in. They connect pretty well. Oh, Oh my gosh, what's even happening here? Just going straight for the drones, by the way. He doesn't even care about the mutalists. I think he realizes he still can't win the air fight, uh, especially with the upgrades of uh, Kinetic here. 1-1 one, one just finishing. Uh, doesn't even get a drone with the mutalists, unfortunately. But it, those Scourge probably traded okay. But damn, Kinetic has a lot of gas. He needs to get his own Scourge. Kinetic has found both bases on the left side. Oh, he has too. One single link in the top left. He's probably kicking himself right now. He's probably like, God damn, what, what's been going on this time? The mutalists of Sony snipping, slipping through the net. Gonna come straight back in for another round. Man, he does not even care. A few drones falling at the, the top, a couple drones falling at the nine, but these bases are still up. Now look at this, these middle cornered, where are they going to go now? Pulls the drones yeah, towards I, Kinetic. I mean, all things considered, we see how Sony's playing, how he keeps by time being annoying. Hive's about to finish. Look at these links <laughs> he's going to have around. the good link. Dude, I think Sony's about to win because his links are about to hit the bottom left. And I, they might break through here as well. Okay, there's a couple of middle at the natural, but this bottom left is not going to survive. This is too many links. And he cannot attack that main. That is not an option. He could send some mutalists to attack the side, but then maybe Sony mutalists will backstab. I had three the bottom left. <laughs> what is happening? So a single ling runs into the main. Gonna start on those gas drones. Chaos erupting here. 
kinetic, desperate trying to send mutalists over to this uh, third, but I think that might actually be even worse than just letting it die at this point, because it might open up for a counterattack. Well, that's it, he does still have plenty of mutalists at home. But I mean, Kinect building up plenty of mutalists. He could go Greater Spire here and just get to Barrows, and that would probably end the game, but do you even need to? I think at this point, Sony could just make more mutalists for him anyway. Kinect does have a huge amount of gas, I would love to see some Scourge out of him. Yeah, I just like, what do you do at this point? Like, because it's not like Connect's army is bad. It's not like he's making bad decisions, but Sony's made this game so weird, expanded so far away. Because Sony's even going back in there, playing Mew's back at home to help with the defense. Sony oh. just fly right in and takes a lot of free damage. So, we can see both sides still really scrambling here as Connect's going to start playing in his left side. No, he wasn't really micro in these middles for a second. And that's going to cost him. These links coming in as a distraction. Look, as long as Kinetic has the superior air force, this game will not end, but he's just pinged back with these Zerglings here, continually taking losses. I know I've said it like three times, but I really just want to see a Sunken or two with this natural, even like one in the main state, would really have saved him so much pain here. Look at this, but this, is, this, well. this is the ZVZ equivalent of just build the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Come uh, on, build one bunker. I mean, it's not as straightforward in ZVZ, because you really don't want to lose any yeah, yeah. The 9 getting taken out, by the way, while all that was going on, so Kinetic really has enough air forces to be in two places at once, but look at the spores in the top left. That is going to hold this, no problem. But it does give Kinetic a chance to come back economically here, because now it's two base versus two base. <laughs> Sony. Greater Spire. Now yes. we're going to get the real I think Air that's Force. That's the move. That's the move. Because yeah, Kinetic absolutely. has zero spores. If you win the air fight, you win the game, like straight up. And you don't really need that many Devourers. You get three or four Devourers, like that's plenty. Because those spores are just so effective in Mutalist versus Mutalist. Yeah, and Sony already has the Crackling upgrade, doesn't he? Yes, so, like, he his, his his units are just robust in their own particular glass can kind of way. <laughs> They're plus one melee and and adrenal. Now, look at this kinetic out of position once again. Try to take a third here. Will Sony opt for that? No, he's going to go straight for the drones, and I think that is the move here. But at the same time, kinetic is going to deny a hatchery, but the link's going to come straight in. And honestly, this might be enough to end the game on their own. Oh my gosh, here they come. The mute is coming back for Kinetic desperately. Gotta go for the lair, and if he loses the lair and the spire, he can't rebuild it. Okay, no, he's not actually going for the lair, I lied. But with Adrenal, that, that spire has no chance. It's done. Okay, the mutalists come back in for Kinetic, and he clean up Sony's mutalists again, but once again, Link's coming down to the natural, doing a lot of damage to the drones. Mutalists? Ooh, look at the, look at the sparring pole, already half health, five links, and can they do enough? It's so close, 130 Ooh. does barely get cleaned up. Okay, all the mutalists, oh my gosh, why did I do that? I'm sorry, I keep doing this. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today, but in I keep kidding but that. In the natural, another little group, just connect. Sony is being just annoying as hell as he's building up. He does have a couple devourers on the way. Building four, it's still going to be very helpful against Three this giant drones group. Left. Three drones left for Kinetic. All he has is these mutalisks, and Sony, he's building the devourers. He has an answer for that too. I think Kinetic is about to go for an all-out attack. I think he figures that's the only way he can win. And like, if it was only mutalisks, i say it's possible, but with these devourers, oh my gosh, where, where is he going, by the way? He's going to be caught off guard. If he can come in and snipe these spores real quick, then potentially take the air engagement, he could still win here. Oh no, the devourers turning around. They're going to fight here. Oh, it is here just, it is not what you want to be doing here. Oh, yes. Oh, the acid spores all over those. Take more damage from the spores and the noodles. GG Kinetic realizes that is not a fight he is going to win. His noodles evaporating. What a game. GG. Alright, so just because that game had a lot of stuff going on, two very small things. I never got to see Devourers, Fire, and Carbot, so awesome. What do they look it looks like? I don't great. Even know. They're they're pretty cute. They're, they're pretty cute, as you would think they would be. And <laughs> they're pretty cool. <laughs> um but Honestly, that is like the quintessential. You watch the replay and you're like, God damn this guy. Like, you're so angry at yourself for letting it happen because kinetic, yeah. that should never have happened. You get to like three minutes after they go to like four spores, big turtle, they're not going to hiders. Like, why are you still in this game? He should have immediately scouted for other bases. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Look, um, you know, I'd say so Sony did his best from a behind position though. He took the gambles he needed to take and like, you know, he kept him pinned down with Zerglings. Um, and it is a tricky thing. I feel like in that situation, Zerg really needs to maintain the map control of the Mutalist and keep your opponent back. And that's why, because he was pinned in his base so many times. So many times Lings came in and backstabbed. Um, I, th I think what I mentioned is, you know, because he's giving out the map control, Sony had a lot of opportunities and he took them. Yeah. Now, are you happy that we had a 20 minute ZVZ with no hydras though? I'm so happy. Were you, were, were, were you, were you worried? <laughs> um, no, not really, because uh, I could see that they were both going for mutalisks. Look, we'll talk about it in a second. Let me introduce the players here. In the top right, in the yellow, is Caravaggio. 
And the top left in the black is Doodle Doodle. I had no I was already saying it earlier this cast, but I have to say it, Doodle Doodle probably one of the best, if not the best, player in T Zero. I mean Kiko's no slouch by the way, who we saw Doodle died of the four pool, five pool. Never mind that. Um, but definitely very strong players coming in this game here. Oh, so I, I'm just happy to see Duel, Duels back in their main race. Last season they yeah. were off racing Terran to learn, but back on Protoss. <laughs> they got to show them what's up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I, I think it's better when people bring their, their most right. And honestly, if you're too good to play, I mean, we always need more coaches, right? Um, anyway, yes. About that previous game, right? Look, I don't mind Hydras if it's like both players go to Hive and like they can't keep making air units so they have to transition into Defiles or something and Hydras come out. That would be cool. It's just like when you have an obviously superior option, I don't want to see it. That's all. Now let's like Doodle Doodle going to try and go for a forward gateway placement here. Um, will he get the one scout and be able to gas steal? That could be very powerful. Although this probe, it's going to the middle of the map. Oh, he's crossed. It's it. Yeah, I think you just, if you're gonna, because that makes sense, if you're gonna do the forward gateway, this eliminates, like, do I build the Zealot? Right, and you know, he could always just go Nexus first, I suppose, if he, um, okay, no, he built the gateway. If he scouted his opponent was crossed, but no, he is gonna go for the gateway. It might be like, if you had that chance, you might even, it might even be worth cancelling for it. You think so? Would it still be worth it? Because you cut probes as well. Um, I think you could just go into a normal game with, with like, goon opening would be better. Because it just seems so unaccountable to cancel that after cutting probes as well. Now, meanwhile, how about you just opening normally here? Um, should we take gas in a second? Ooh, wait, yes. wait, why are you cutting? Why are you cutting probes for a forward gateway? Because uh, you got it at nine. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Which I think makes sense when you're doing a forward gateway. Now, by the way, Caravaggio not even taking his gas. Looks like he's thinking about a gasless expand here. Um, now, against forward gateway placement, that's going to be pretty tough. You're going to need a very good SimCity and good micro to actually hold that. Because uh, those zealots are going to cause a little trouble for you. And, uh, you know, in just a minute, Doodle Doodle's going to know exactly where Terran is. This is why we see most of the time when people go Rex FE, they put their barracks at the natural to help with some city. I think we're about to see. Caravaggio have a lot of difficulties. Okay, he does take the gas actually though. So I guess he's doing that build where you kind of see if you can find out what Probus is doing first. And he's going to go for that kind of later factory. Um, which I think should be fine as long as he might as well against these Dalits. That's, the, that's just the thing. Well, uh, so fortunately I don't think he's seen this coming just yet. So this Marine on the ramp might have to be very, very careful. It's going to move out, but you can already see that first cell in the probe going to be moving through here. This could be very dangerous. Well, Ooh. if he moves Even back and get away, oh no, he's between the base. The hard side. bait. <laughs> nice, nicely done by Doodle Doodle. He he just plays him like a like a what do you call it? Fiddle. And that's it, like a fiddle. That's the word. Um, and this marine now is running away from the Terran base while the zealot chases it. I mean, eventually Doodle Doodle's just gonna head to the Terran base. But like, all right, it's one less marine for you. And where's that one going? They got baited by the probe again. So these zealots just like they're the marines now. The marines are the attackers. Like, he's trying to build this bunker, but also, even if this bunker gets up, does it really make that much difference? He can still just go in the main. Um, Zell's trying to hit these SCVs, does deny the bunker for a minute. Oh, he's hitting that Marine! One Marine goes down, another one about to fall, the bunker goes up, the Marine's gonna go in it, but I don't think the Zell's care that much. They're just like, okay, see ya! Yeah, you already killed enough SCVs alone to make this worth it, and now yeah. they're gonna be in the main, still oh. reasonably healthy, gonna be able to keep fighting here. Factory only Ooh. just starting, and it cancels accidentally! <laughs> Okay, okay, maybe he deliberately cancelled because it's in a bad spot. Um, this is not the best spot for SimCity, but it's reasonable, it's workable. And now he's got his little micro hole, he can try and do something, but these zealots are still able to do a lot of damage. The probe finally falls, one zealot needs to be pulled back, it's very injured, unfortunately it does die, I'm surprised he didn't pull that back. Um, Nexus going down at home while, while this is going on for Doodle Doodle, and you can see the weakness of going this late gas, this factory is so late. Normally he'd be getting a vulture almost already, so he'd be able to deal with this, but now these, vulture, uh, these zealots are still running around causing havoc. While Protoss is just very happily macroing at home. Oh, and oh boy, are they <laughs> Oh, they're, they're macro. <laughs> yeah, see, I I was just going to say, oh, I like the decision. Delay the goon range so you can get the Nexus faster. That's so smart. It makes a lot of sense. And instead, no, we're saving gas for deceptive shenanigans. Ooh, rally point goes through. This goon just runs past that bunker. There's only one guy in there, so it's not that much DPS. So this attack is going to keep going. All you got to do is really keep Caravaggio off balance right here. And uh, Duel Duel is going to be thrilled to death because the way this game has gone already, you think he's going to remember to get that eBay on time? You think we're going to remember to like, get mines in the first upgrade? He's on one base right now. He is so thrown off. Like, I don't think Caravaggio <laughs> even knows what he's doing himself at this point. And yeah, the Templar Archive is already on the way. Um, 
Yeah, the worker count equalized, by the way, when the next second next is about to finish up, so Terra gonna fall behind as well, even blocks that scout. Now, this is kind of suspicious already to begin with, to be honest. So, you see that, you might already think, oh, wait, maybe I should worry about TT. We don't see an eBay starting, though. Hey, this game's gonna end. Yeah, what's, uh, out of curiosity, what's the suspicious thing? The next is oh, just the finishing now, or the, or, yeah, I was gonna say the one singular goon. I, I, I forget that you can't see, like, where I'm taking the screen. I was at the ramp of the goon, and honestly, anytime you see a goon on the ramp, especially at this phase of the game, you're kind of like, okay, what are you doing? And you can kind of tell if they have range or not, and also, if he had range, he'd be hitting the bunker. So, I feel like there's ample indications. Now, an academy is going up. It's something, but it's not. It's not really the best because you ran out of energy. Yeah, my, mine's, mine's, mine's too. Mine's okay. too. So you know, there is going to be some kind something, of something, but it's not really the best option because Protoss can kind of bake them out of units. They can defuse them. They might not be in the right place. There are weaknesses here. Turrets really are the the best counter. That's it. He's not actually building any vultures yet because he's being too poor, I think. <laughs> but I mean, if your opponent's going DT, you kind of don't need as many units, so it kind of works out actually. As long as he can get the detection up in time, uh, DT is out. But it's not rallied to the Terran base. Every second counts here. This might be a significant misplay from Drew Dool. Okay, delays up two or three seconds. That might be a huge deal. The shuttle, shuttle, deal. shuttle, shuttle, shuttle. <laughs> oh, is he building one? Oh, so if he can't get into the front, he'll find another way. And oh, with he's no turrets, find him with no yeah. turrets, these commsats are absolutely useless against that. Like, what anti does he have? There's a few marines in the bunker, like, you're gonna be able to abuse the hell out of Terran. Look at this DT coming up, and the, the combat is not done, the mine is not being laid, he's gonna walk right on in there. Ooh, I don't know about that. I think he should have gone into the main there, because he's really giving Terran an alert, giving him the option to lay the mines there. Honestly, okay, hear me on the high, high, high level, okay? We're really getting Galaxy worried about this. Yeah. You go in with on the ground with one, so the drop, they don't think you're gonna drop. Man, are you telling me right now that that, that, that Doom Doodle meant to do that? Like, I don't know, man. That seems kind of weak. <laughs> Imagine that, that DT nah. was in the main, how much harder it would have been to deal with mines. Like, he would have been mining in here while the second DT came to the natural. I mean, I don't know. I just think it, it's not the play. Yeah, yeah, but Terran just killed two DTs. We're gonna DT rush. That's usually the number you stop at, but oh my god, these vultures are gonna go up. They're gonna see the shuttle. Okay, but what can Terran actually do about this? He can pull his marines and try and shoot down. If I don't think he even noticed. He doesn't actually have much, much options right now. <laughs> he says to be like, I hope that's empty. I hope that's a fake out. He's gonna lay his mines under it, but like, hold on. Lift up, lift up! Oh, he took a mine hit. So unnecessarily there. Okay, then come in here, though. Yeah, now, now this is getting dicey for Terran. You don't have that much energy. Every unit gets picked off, you gotta remake that, that costs money. Goon does fall, but I mean, it distracts that vulture for a while, so all for the good. And, you know, Protoss continues to make pros behind this. Nice scan. Goliath does come out. I didn't know he even had an armory, but that's definitely the unit you need. Life range helps a lot. Oh man, why is he leaving? Oh man, he's really letting Terran stabilize here. Okay, well, he does. I mean, all, all things considered, he started a third Nexus. He's got a good worker lead. Terran's definitely off balance. And he, since he already has Templar, he's about to finish Stargate. He's going to be on Arbiters pretty soon. This situation looks great. I think you don't risk losing the shuttle, losing these DTs. I guess. I'm just used to my opponents on Ladder who, like, they will never give up any opportunity to kill me whatsoever. Oh, Jesus. He almost lost both DTs there. I mean, I see what he was trying to do, but he almost screwed yeah. it up big time. Yeah, that's hard to do. I tried to do that yeah. once to watch the video of a Medusa game. I think Stork played. <laughs> exactly I was like, oh, I w that's so cool. I want to try it. It's like, no, I can't do it. It's impossible. I like taking this 12 o'clock, by the way, because um, unless Terran's in like a really good position in the game, it's quite hard to actually push that. And look at this. His vultures going to be like, hang on a second. Oh, no. And it's so hard to actually do anything about this as Terran in this situation. By the time you're actually ready to deal with it, it's probably going to be mined out. So I, I really like that move from Doodle. And that's a base Terran can't take like, later now. Yeah, it's just weird to see pros expand third towards the Terran. <laughs> That's such a weird, like, feel. It's definitely it's definitely worth doing, I think, in this situation. No, oh, those watches barely don't snipe that one probe. I mean, the scouting info they got was probably worth their lives. But, I mean, what does Terran even have on me wise? Does he have any tanks whatsoever? Oh, they just popped out. Okay. Okay. It's not looking particularly great. Now, if you're Caravaggio, you see, like, even if you know, like, with your clairvoyance right now, that you know what's going on, what is your path to get? Do you try to take a third, hope you can get away with oh, it? Do no. you add a bunch of hell factories no. and just try to do a two-base push? You're going to take a third at, like, 15 minutes, man. You're going to sit in here, you're going to get seven factories, you're just going to build units, and you're going to pray that he recalls. 
basically. That's that's the best uh. play because you you cannot go out on that map as soon as stasis is done. Even without stasis, the cloak is going to be held. Because what army do you have? You have like four tanks right now, ten minutes in the game. Protoss will destroy you with stasis. You need to just like stay in here until you have a billion tanks, inch your way out to that third, and just try and split map. I think is the best way to play this. Um, now, we have Protoss investing all their resources into Arbiter. There's potentially a window to push before it's out where you might have a slight advantage, but I feel like as soon as the Arbiter comes out, it swings way back, and the, if the, Pro the Terran army but, gets crushed out there pushing, you're just going to die. But he's investing in Arbiter upgrades, not the actual fucking Arbiter. Oh no, it's the <laughs> energy first meme. God damn it. Jealous, still <laughs> hurting us to this day. Ugh. Well, he starts at 62, man. It's, it's pretty good. Only, only if you start the Arbiter after energy is finished. Well, hang on. A fight going up here. DT's being dropped going on these tanks. Even if the engagement doesn't look that good, the DT's honestly do a lot of damage, a lot of distraction. Goons vs. Tanks, normally not a good matchup for Protoss, but Terran just does not have enough. And this is the thing, that was a well-executed engagement by Doodle with being on the high ground, really just shut that down. And that's every tank Caravaggio you had, GG. We're not going to get to see the end in the Arbiter Energy. Alright, that's their last game, but I do have time for a rant, alright? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, Arbiter Energy does not give you any extra energy unless the upgrade is finished. Finished, you hear me? before you start an Arbiter. If you build an Arbiter in the Stargate, and then the upgrade finishes, you get nothing. And you can get Recall and Stasis, and have enough energy for Recall before the Arbiter energy would be worthwhile. Do not do this. I know I said Doodle Doodle is like the best player in CPL, but do not do it. Cobalt Gates, it's true, trust me. Dude, it's yeah, true. I, That's how energy upgrades work, Cobalt Gates. You have to actually yeah, I, have the upgrades was... finished. It's not like StarCraft 2. It's not nice like that. Trust yeah, me. I was gonna say I never thought about the arbiters, but that's how it works with high templars. That's how it works with every energy upgrade. Um, yeah. So do not do what Doodle Doodle did, except win the game. That was pretty good. That's usually a good move. <laughs> Just don't get arbiter arbiter. Energy. But that's the last game yeah. for today. I'm extremely stressed out about all these games, to be honest. But they were great. They were, right, they were so you know, you know, it won't stress you out though. Because I haven't had a chance to shell. Let's shell just a little bit, a tiny okay, teaser calm shell. Down, calm me down, set zero. Well. Normally, you know how we cast on Wednesdays? Yeah. We're going to cast on Thursdays. Well, I am at least. If you're around, awesome. If not, you know, we'll figure it out. But we're going to move it one day for a special reason. Still in the preseason. So people aren't teams. But it doesn't mean people don't want to help out. Flo is going to do a Zerg coaching session tomorrow. Hell yeah. So we're going to yield to them. They can go with it. And we're going to cast on Thursday instead. Sounds great. That does calm me down a lot. Coaching sessions, perfect. Yeah, but actually, like I've noticed, like all our coaching sessions, it feels like it's a lot of Zerg. It feels like it's a lot of Zerg guys out there. Well, right. I mean, that's fine. You know, I feel like sometimes we have not as many Zerg coaches as other races, um, so I think that's okay. Just let's let each race have their turn. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, that's going to be it for this cast. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you on Thursday. Don't miss that coaching session.